Hey, fellas. How you doing? How you doing? My cat's under the table trying to get attention. You know how it works with StreamYard. Even though I'm broadcasting on my YouTube channel, Facebook, I'm using StreamYard. So that means there's going to be a 16-second delay approximately. So I'm just looking at my cat to see if my cat's going to distract me, needs some attention. Because if the Lord Jesus wills, the Lord Jesus willing, I'm flying out tomorrow, guys. I need your prayers. I really, truly cherish your prayers. You prayer warriors, you who have been gifted by the Spirit to pray for brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, pray for the church, especially for the persecuted church, whom God has gifted to be the ones that cry out in prayer because God delights in hearing the prayers of the righteous who submit to the Spirit, who walk in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. You prayer warriors, you know who you are because God has confirmed to you, you are those members of the body of Christ who pray and intercede. We all are supposed to pray. We all must intercede. But for some of us, it takes a lot more discipline. Others, it's natural because that's your gifting. So you prayer warriors, lift up my daughters and I in prayer. I'm going to be gone because Lord willing, September 14, I'm going to be 50. So I'm going to visit my daughters until the Lord Jesus brings them into my life daily, where I see them every day, which is the miracle that I ache for and I beg and beseech Lord Jesus to fulfill sooner than later, to have them every day. So I can see them before my eyes every day and be used of the Spirit to be Jesus to them and protect them. So Lord willing, I'm leaving tomorrow. <clears throat> I need your prayers for traveling mercies there and back. Please pray God will grant my daughters and I miraculous, divine, supernatural, physical safety, security, protection, health. Ask the Lord Jesus to save me from all demons and wolves and any snare and from a corrupt legal system, a corrupt, wicked judge, a daughter of Satan, that the Lord shield me from them and ask the Lord Jesus to empower me to walk worthy of him, perfect self-control, self-discipline, self-restraint, to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ, glorify Jesus Christ and the way I live and the way I conduct myself. Because once I'm there, I'll be also teaching the word. I'm invited to a church there to teach on two consecutive Sundays if the Lord Jesus wills. So I need your prayers, guys. Lift me up. So today the cat is going to need a lot of attention because I'll be gone for about a month at least over three weeks. So thank the Lord Jesus. I have someone here, a cat sitter, that will be coming in every day to check up on the cat, provide fresh water, food, clean up the litter. So God bless that individual for serving me for the sake of Jesus. So pray for my cat to be saved. Pray God will protect the apartment. Pray for the Lord to bless me there, sustain me there. Pray the Lord will bless my daughters and Bring us together and make us inseparable. I need your prayers, guys. So please, I'll be there for at least a month, over three weeks, and I'll be teaching there. So if you guys want to meet me, contact me on Skype or on Facebook Messenger, and I'll let you know where I'm at. I don't want to give away the location because I don't want to get people attacked. I don't want to get people harmed by these filthy, wicked demons, these sons and daughters of the devil, these dogs of Satan, whether Muslims or anti-Trinitarians or even false brethren. I want to make sure that my daughters are safe and others who know me are safe and they don't, they don't get attacked because of me. So, guys, do pray for that. See, the cat's here again. Okay, kitty, what do you need? I don't know. Sometimes the cat comes here because she's telling me she wants to go out. So let me see if she wants to go out. Let me see. Hold on, guys. One second. And be prayed up. Remember? Razzles, good to see you every six months. It's your world, Razzles. I'm just a squirrel in your world. It's your world and Zena's world. So be prayed up. Do these three things for me. Most importantly, pray for one another. Pray for me because we're going to get attacked. Every time we do something major to destroy the wicked, filthy lies and blasphemies of the sons and daughters of Satan and his wicked religious systems, we get the dogs manifesting like crazy. May the Lord Jesus muzzle them, chasten them, teach them to fear the Lord and constrain us not to be distracted. So be prayed up. The Holy Spirit teaches and we are disciples of the Spirit. Hit the like button. Subscribe, please, if you haven't. 
and share this on your social media platforms. And when we begin, it's a class. We want the Holy Spirit to teach. We listen. We don't engage and be distracted because if you are discussing with someone, you're not listening. If you're not listening, you're not learning while you hear that. Please. Let me see if the cat wants to go out. Because she keeps coming under the table. That's usually a sign that she's telling me, open the door, let me out. So let's see. You want to go out, Katie? What's up, Katie? Come on now. Boy, does she raise up my electric bill. Okay, so the door's open. And I can't be too loud. I can't be a distraction to my neighbors. I want to share some stories as well. People I hadn't seen in years, I saw, because I was at the Assyrian Convention. The Assyrian Convention. Yep, keeping up with the Shimonians. By the way, I don't know if you know this. Razel, the loser, will confirm. Um, you know how you have Keeping Up with the Kardashians? There's actually a YouTube channel titled Keeping Up with the Chaldeans. Now, for those of you who don't know, Chaldeans and Assyrians are the same ethnic people group. Chaldeans are Assyrians. Assyrians are Chaldeans. Don't let any Chaldean hater tell you otherwise. We're all one people. The Chaldeans belong to the Catholic Church, whereas Assyrians, for the most part, belong to the Assyrian Apostolic Church, labeled Nestorian Church. So this is the major division between them. The Chaldeans are Catholic. The Assyrians go to the Assyrian Apostolic Church, labeled Nestorian Church. But we're simply the same people ethnically. So just keep that in mind. So on YouTube... On YouTube, there is a show called Keeping Up with the Chaldeans. Because, you know, these Chaldeans, you know, they just want to be like the Kardashians. No, I'm just kidding, Chaldeans. Uh, don't hit me. Don't stone me. You're my people, and I love you. I love you for the sake of Jesus Christ. And one thing about Razzle is I just want you to know, he is Zena's brother and Choose Jesus' brother. Choose Jesus, Zena, and Razzle. These are three of my mods. And... Razzles and Xena own the world. It's their world. We are squirrels. So we got to get their permission to get a nut. All right. So with that said, folks, let's pray. I'm just seeing if my cat wants to go out. I don't want to be a distraction to my neighbors. This is it, guys. I don't have a professional studio. I don't want to make millions of dollars to have a staff. Right. So this is it. With these meager <clears throat> conditions, the Almighty God, who's infinitely powerful, all powerful, He can take these meager conditions and do wonders because He's Almighty. Let me see. Cat doesn't want to go out. Okay, Cat, I'm getting sick of opening the door. You know, you don't own me. Okay, you don't own me. Razzles doesn't own me. You and Razzles don't own me. You don't tell me what to do. Okay, don't come under a table trying to get my attention. Open the door. Okay, let's focus. So let's be prayed up. Let's pray. I have a lot of spiritual meat, especially dealing with this Mohammedan Tovia singer. He is a spiritual prostitute, a spiritual whore of Muslims, a coward who won't bash Islam and Muhammad because he's afraid that the Muslims will kill him. <clears throat> I don't know if he's in Indonesia anymore. Last time I heard, he was actually in Indonesia, I guess serving the Jewish community there. So Indonesia has the highest population of Muslims. So that tells you why this coward will not attack Muslims or the Quran or Muhammad because he knows they'll behead him and enslave his family and rape his women folk because that's what Allah and his messenger teach in the Quran and the Sunnah. So he knows we Christians... We cannot kill, we cannot physically harm those who blaspheme Jesus Christ. We hand them over to the Lord Jesus for judgment, right? So we can't do that. We're not Muslims. We have a right to defend our lives. We have a right to protect ourselves physically from someone trying to kill us, kill our loved ones. That we have the right, but we do not have the right to kill someone for rejecting the gospel and blaspheming Jesus Christ. And this wicked, filthy coward knows it. This is why I call him a Mohammedan prostitute. He's ready to pay jizya to his Muslim overlords and masters. Even though, even though there was a Muslim who found a clip of Tobia Singer praising and rejoicing 
over what the Isra Israeli government was doing to the Palestinians in Palestine as they bombed them. And that Muslim uploaded that clip to one of his YouTube channels telling Muslims he's not your friend. He hates the Palestinians and he hates Muslims. He's only using you guys because they have a common enemy, Jesus Christ our Lord. Muhammad's God and Tovia Singer's destroyer. So I'm going to expose this Phil for what he is. And for those of you who ask me why I don't debate him, I believe he was on either Ijaz Ahmed's channel or Paul Williams. One of those channels because someone told me. I didn't watch them, but maybe you guys can hunt it down, where he basically said he would not debate me because I'm mean, I'm rude, and I don't exemplify you know, spirit of Christianity. Isn't that ironic? The guy makes a living bullying Christians, mocking Christians, attacking Christians, slandering Christians, blaspheming Jesus, insulting Jesus, and he whines like an overweight, fat little sissy that I mean, and that's why I won't debate me. So then what's his excuse not debating, not debating Michael Brown? Thank you. That's right. You remembered, brother, so thank you. Because Can Canadian Catholic had to shut down his YouTube and good riddance, that snake. He was another snake giving Catholics and Christians in general a bad name. May God have mercy on all of us and purify us and wash us. So we're going to deal with him. I had the misfortune of watching a short 18-minute clip where he's addressing a young Christian man on TikTok who is trying to respond to Tovia Singer's misuse of Deuteronomy 6.4. Okay. Now, help me to help you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, share this on your social media platforms, invite more folks, help me to help you, be prayed up, ask the Spirit to fill us, and do not let demons distract you and focus. So let's begin in prayer because yesterday was a rough day for me, Labor Day, rough, struggling with sinful lust and passion, struggling with food. May God heal us, purify us, wash us. And cleanse us, purge us in the blood of Jesus Christ and the holy fire of the Holy Spirit. Destroy our bondage to our flesh and the fruits of the flesh and make us whole spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically, feeding us the holy flesh of Jesus Christ, giving us the precious blood of Jesus Christ and doing that for our loved ones and my daughters, for our healing, for our food and nourishment, for our medicine, for our salvation, redemption, protection, and deliverance. We need you, Father. We need this, the Son of your love, the Lord Jesus Christ. We need your eternal, glorious, beautiful Holy Spirit. Pour out your spirit upon us, Father, upon all true believers, upon the persecuted church. Seal us by your spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Purge us with the holy fire of the Holy Spirit. And your spirit is the fountain of living waters. Drown us and flood us in your living waters. Drown and flood our loved ones, my daughters, in your living waters. And cleanse and wash and purify our loved ones, my angels, my daughters, and all of us in the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Lamb of God, your Lamb sent to sacrifice his soul for our salvation. Father, we ask, forgive us when we fail. Be patient with us and give us the power to be patient. That's my weakness. Destroy my weaknesses. Destroy my impatience. Destroy our flesh and the fruits of the flesh. Destroy our lusts our sinful passions, destroy covetousness, destroy jealousy and ego and envy and slander and gossip and maliciousness. Save us from all idolatry. Do not allow us to prostitute ourselves for money. Destroy our fear of finances. Do not allow us to prostitute ourselves for praise or status or fortune, Father. Please purify, wash, sanctify our motives, our desires in the blood of Jesus to do it for the glory of Jesus, not for the praise of men, not to be politically correct. At the same time, Father, not to justify when we are sinning in our anger, convict us, convict me, especially by your spirit, not to go overboard, not to be controlled by my passions. You control our passions, our urges, and set us free from every stain and bondage to every idol. Set us free, Father, enslave us to you, to your Son, the Lord Jesus, to your Holy Spirit, to your Word, the Holy Bible. Your perfect voice. May your voice drown out all other voices. Drown out the voice of Satan, of the world, of our flesh. 
to know your voice, that our loved ones will know your voice. My daughters will know your voice, the voice of your son, the voice of your spirit, enslaved to your voice, controlled by your voice, transformed by your voice, in love with your voice, proclaiming your voice and living in obedience to your voice, even unto death. And we know for a fact that the Bible is your voice, historically accurately, perfectly preserved, to have no doubt that is your word to us. Help us to know that book, understand that book, recite that book, obey that book, live out that book, love that book, interpret correctly and perfectly and proclaim without shame, even unto death, no matter what they do to us, Father. The same Holy Spirit that filled the holy prophets, the holy men and women, the holy apostles and their companions to glorify Jesus Christ to the point of being beaten, tortured, imprisoned, this disowned, abandoned, murdered, without betraying or denying or blaspheming Jesus Christ. Give us that same Holy Spirit that you gave them. That no matter what happens to us, what they do to us, we will not deny or betray or blaspheme or shame or disown the Lord Jesus Christ. Control our carnal tongues and our carnal mouths by your infinite power. With your infinite power, guard our mouths and our tongues. Wash our tongues and our mouths in the blood of the Lamb. The Lord Jesus Christ, that no matter what we say, we will not utter any wicked, filthy, idolatrous, blasphemous word. Please save us so we don't deny Jesus Christ. And save us from falling into any scandal, whether financial or sexual. So many are falling, and you know our weaknesses, Father. We trust in you to save us, in your Son to preserve us, in your Holy Spirit to guard us. We do not trust in ourselves. I do not trust in myself. I am wicked without the Holy Spirit. I can easily betray the Lord. So our trust is in the Spirit, your gift to us, in your Son, whom you love, in you, Father. Bless this session. Bless the internet and audio and visual qualities. <clears throat> Illuminate our hearts and minds to hear your voice, the voice of your Son, the voice of your Spirit, to plunge the depth of Scripture, feast on the meat of Scripture. Save me from error. Save me from misinterpretation. Save me from stammering and stuttering. Please, Father, please, Son of God, Lord Jesus, please, Holy Spirit, Make my voice powerful and pleasing and full of passion to glorify Christ without compromise. Not to be unnecessarily offensive, but not to be a crowd pleaser. And please grant me perfect self-control, self-restraint, self-discipline to stay healthy and fit and use my healthiness to glorify you, to glorify the Son, to glorify the Spirit. Please, Father. Please, Son of God, Lord Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit. Strengthen my throat with perfect health and vigor. Strengthen my lungs and my chest and heart and arteries so that nothing will hinder me to be used of your spirit to bless your church, your sons and daughters, Father, and build them up as the spirit uses human vessels. And I pray I'm one of them to glorify the Lord Jesus and to strengthen your church as long as you give me life and preserve me and enable us to be doers of your word, not hypocrites. I will serve your church out of love for you, Father, out of love for your son, the Lord Jesus, out of love for your Holy Spirit. To show to myself that I'm not a hypocrite, that I desire to love Jesus. Enable us to not be hypocrites, but doers of your word. And love one another for the sake of Jesus. Perfect the gifts in me to recall scriptures perfectly and never forget them and obey them myself as I bless your people by your Holy Spirit. We know you don't need us, Father. We know that. And I know you don't need me. You are God without us. With or without us, you are God. And you're perfectly sufficient. You are self-existent, self-sufficient. You need nothing or anyone outside of your own being and existence. You with the Son and the Spirit, inseparable, immutable, eternal, are all and in all and have all that you need, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It is your free will, the gift of your grace and mercy and compassion and love that you decided to create so that you would give creation this gift of knowing you and being flooded in your love forever and ever if we submit to the Spirit and not resist. May we never resist the Spirit. May we never turn our backs <clears throat> to the Lord Jesus Christ. And may we never reject your love. We need you, Father. We need you, Lord Jesus. We need your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Yo, Rafa, yo, Rafa, yo, Rafa, Father's Spirit. So, guys, you see, the cat wants attention. What's up, Sargon D? D, Sargon D is in his D. Okay, come on, come on, come on. See the cat? I'm trying to open the door. Come on, Jay. Come on. 
नमस्ते Keeps coming on the table. That's a sign the cat wants to go out. I keep opening the door. She raises up my electric bill because the air condition keeps going on, leaving me broke, like all the women in my life, using me for my food and money, then dumping me. You want to go out? Go. You know. All right. Let me see. I'll give her a couple of minutes. All right. We'll begin this session after I say the Lord's prayer. But I want to share some testimonies. Here comes the cat again. May the Lord give us perfect self-control and patience. Yeah, I am Shiko Paulson. We're watching the God's everything, Lord Jesus Christ. You have Rafa, you have Rafa, follow the Holy Spirit. By the way, did you see my shirt? See what it is? I found this. I don't know where. I don't know. Let me see. Uh, where did I buy it from? Was it Walmart? My favorite fashion store. The man. The myth. The legend. The man. The myth. The legend. Da -da. That's actually there's a film, a biography on the life of Bruce Lee, play, pr, played by Bruce Lai, L I. It's called Bruce Lee, the Man, the Myth. So the man, the myth, the legend. Da -da. Don't hate A K Q J one zero. Can you add another fifty characters to your name and make it longer? The necessary AKQJ10. Hater. All right. She's not going out, man. All right. This is it, man. If she comes again under my table trying to get attention, I will look down, hunt down Sargon D, and I'll bash his face in and repent. I will punish you, Sargon D, for the sins of the cat. This is getting ridiculous, man. You either going out, you're staying in. All right. I want to share a miracle story that I was a witness to, and I may ask this brother for me to do a recording where I don't show his face so he can confirm this testimony because I saw this brother at the Assyrian Convention. The Assyrian Convention is an annual convention, usually takes place Labor Day weekend, where Assyrians all over the world come. And this is a great opportunity because you get to see Assyrian friends and family that you haven't seen in years. I've run into people I haven't seen in 20 years. And it was a great time because I ran into a lot of my buddies from my teenage years and young adult years. What is it, man? I don't know what you want. Dude, anyway, may the Lord Jesus destroy all distractions. Let me share this actual actual miracle that one of the people at the convention was a witness to you guys listening are you ready now to share this miracle true miracle i was a witness to it and this young man i'll call him amo i won't give you his full name his name is amo he was a witness to this there were actually four witnesses to this event myself amo a man named riva and someone named Adonia. Adonia, if you don't know what that is, that's Adon, Adonija. Adonia is Adonija. In Assyrian, it's pronounced Adonia. Anyway, four witnesses to this event. In fact, on Saturday, he was there, Amo, and he shared the testimony himself in front of me and there was Gilbert, there was Rami, and Romeo. Three others. So he confirmed this miracle. You guys ready for me to share this miracle that I was a witness to? Mario, let me just tell this guy. You restored my confidence in you, my young Padawan. Anyway, come to my live stream on live. Now I have hope in you, and I'm going to block Sargon D for your sins. All right, now. He actually mentioned it, and he remembers it like yesterday, and he remembers it exactly the way I remembered it. In fact, I forgot his wife was there too. I was a witness. Amo was a witness. Riva and Adonia. Now, Riva and Adonia were not there. He was. Amo was there with his wife, and he shared this testimony in front of one of our friends named Rami, Gilbert, and I believe Romeo. So he confirmed this. 
in the future, Lord willing, I may ask him to confirm it. I'll record it without showing his face because I don't want to expose any of these brothers to these rabid Mohammedans because their beef is with me, not with these brothers and sisters. And may the Lord Jesus use these experiences to bring them back to the fullness of the truth and faith and ignite their hearts with fire for the glory of Jesus Christ. So let me share this story. So then we're going to begin with the Lord's Prayer, and then we're going to begin the barbecue of Tobias Singer. Okay, now, when I returned to the faith in the 90s, it's okay, Christian, I just sent you a message, sir. You restored my hope in humanity because you answered correctly, and I'll answer your question. And because you restored my hope in humanity, Christian Carson, I will now punish Sargon D for your sins, and I'll block him. Someone has to suffer for your mistake, sir. All right, now... Here's the miracle. I'm a witness to the miracle. The people who witnessed the miracle are still alive, one of whom was there Saturday, and he confirmed the miracle named Amo. Because I know we have a lot of naysayers and skeptics and think we're lying. May God save us from lying and falsehood to be men and women of integrity, speaking the truth at all costs, even if it hurts. May we not be hypocrites, because our God is a God of truth. He's not Allah of the Quran, the greatest of all deceivers. In the 90s, when I returned back to the faith, I had a fire in my heart to evangelize my friends. So this took place. Those of you from Chicago, I'm going to give you the loca location. It's still there in the north side, Foster and Lincoln Avenue. There's a Dunkin' Donuts right there. So you Chicagoans, those of you from Chicago, you know where Foster Avenue is? It's in Chicago, north side. Foster, Lincoln Avenue, there is a Dunkin' Donuts there. So one night, I went there with my Bible. We were sitting in Dunkin' Donuts having coffee, and I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to my buddies, Riva, Adonia, and Amo. Now, imagine Amo sitting right next to me. So he's right here next to me to my left. So I'm not really seeing him because he's close to next to me. So I'm looking at Riva and Adonia, and I'm looking at them. Now, about 20 feet from me, maybe less than 20 feet, 15 feet. There's a lady sitting on a table. She only has one shoe on. Now, this is late. Thought about maybe 11, 12, 11 at night, 12 a.m. It's late. She only has one shoe on, guys. True story. He mentioned it. I didn't even mention it. He said, man, do you remember that? I go, of course I remember, man. I'm glad you remember. You haven't forgotten. Lest people think I'm making stuff up. So, guys, watch what happens. As I'm preaching the gospel... Amos sitting next to me. So I'm not really seeing him because he's right here. We're, our, our backs are to the wall. We're in the back sitting. Riva and Adonia are right to my left. So I'm looking at them. Ladies about less than 20 feet away from me on a table. She's looking in our direction. She has only one shoe on. As I turned to look at Amo, this is his reaction. And he even reminded me. I already remember it. I didn't forget it. But it was glad to hear him remembering the details like yesterday. So this is what he did. This is him. Horrified. And I'm like, man, what's wrong with you, dude? Are you okay? And you know what he said? He was so <laughs> he was so horrified. He said, Look, guys, there are four witnesses to the event. I'm one of them. Amo even rem re reminded me of it and even said to the people, you could not duplicate her expression. You cannot duplicate her expression. What did he mean? I'm going to do my best to show you what we saw. As I'm looking at the young lady, and it was beautiful that he said it. I wish I recorded. He goes, man, you cannot duplicate her expression. He's right. You had to be there to see it. I'm going to do my best. Look what she did. Look what she did. This is what she did. <sighs> That's the best I can do. Amplify that. I'm not even getting close to her manifestation. She started manifesting. She started manifesting as I'm talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the best I can do, and even Amos said, he goes, man, bro, did you remember her face? You can't. I go, yeah. The best I can do, I'm not lying. This is the best. <sighs> manifesting 
Okay. Now I am freaking out. I'm freaking out. I'm scared. So then guess what? I pretend I'm the tough guy. I'm pretend I'm the one who's not scared. So I look at Amon. I said, don't be afraid. Now, guys, I'm actually encouraging myself. As I'm talking to him, I'm the one who's freaking out. I'm scared. So I'm not saying it so much for him. I'm saying it to remind me because I'm scared out of my mind. So I'm saying, don't be afraid. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is here with us. And here, let me prove it to you. And I read Mark 1, 21 to 27, where the demoniac, the demoniac sees Jesus, runs and falls before his feet. And I'm reading it, guys. I'm reading the passage. As I'm reading aloud, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? We know who you are, the Holy One of God. Have you come to destroy us? And when I read Jesus saying, come out of him, and immediately the demon came out. Guys, he remembered it, and he shared it. She got up off the table. She now starts running towards the entrance door, the door where you enter and exit. She's screaming at the top of her lungs. Where are you going now? Yeah, Jesus is here. Why are you leaving? Where are you going? She's shouting at someone. Only she sees. There's no one in front of her. We don't see anyone. She's running towards the door, chasing someone who's leaving the premises after I quote the words of our glorious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rebuking the demon, not knowing as I'm reading that, that demon runs and she's screaming at the demon. Where are you going now? Jesus is here. Why are you leaving? At the top of her lungs. Then I got what happened. So then she sat back down. That woman, I was like this, completely calm. So I go up to her and I said, with the Bible in my hand, I said, Jesus has delivered you. She started crying. I'm a witness. She started crying. Tears fell from her eyes. Peace and joy. And she kissed the Bible. When we left the place, I looked back and this is her reaction waving us goodbye, completely at peace, completely still, completely at joy. I was a witness. My friend Amo, who was there this Saturday, he confirmed the story, and that happened in the 90s. And I didn't remind him. He reminded me, and I already knew the story. So I have seen a lot, and these brothers have seen a lot. Now here's the point of this. Okay. This also confirms another thing. Miracles do not make someone a believer. Miracles do not make someone a Christian. Why do I say that? Because sadly, and I pray in Jesus' name, the holy fire of the Spirit will ignite flame in their hearts. These very individuals who saw that miracle are not on fire for the Lord, are not walking with the Lord, are not worshiping the Lord, are not committed to the Lord, and in some instances, some of them have gone back to becoming agnostic. You understand? Let me repeat. Miracles do not make you a Christian. Miracles does not guarantee you belong to the Lord and that you know Jesus. That's Matthew 7, 21, 23. Matthew 7, 21 to 23, right? Didn't Matthew 7, 21, 23 say, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. For many shall come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, the signs and wonders in your name? And I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawless ones, you who do not submit to my commands, to my law. Exactly, Orthochristos. Judas Iscariot was of the devil. And yet in Matthew 10, verses 1 to 8, read it. Jesus sent out the 12, and one of them named Judas Iscariot, who would later betray him. And he gave them authority. Cleanse lepers. 
cast out demons, and preach the good news of the kingdom. Now, if the connection gets back, I'm going to connect to the modem. I hope not. Let me know if the connection is good. So miracles in of themselves, right, do not guarantee you're a Christian or you're going to be on fire for Jesus or you're going to submit to Jesus Christ our Lord. That's no guarantee. Not a guarantee. My friend, Amo. My friend, Amo. Now, did, did we lose audio or you heard the audio? May the Lord Jesus bless the audio and the visual with no interruptions from Satan. Please, Lord. My friend Amo, who reminded me of that miracle, reminded me of it. I hadn't forgotten. In fact, I wanted to ask him. Remind me of the miracle. But he's not walking with the Lord. Doesn't submit to the Lord. Not, in fact, the other two individuals, they're not walking with the Lord. That doesn't mean I'm walking with the Lord. My walk is imperfect and shameful. May God have mercy on me and forgive me. Lord, Father, Son, Spirit. But this is another miracle where there are eyewitnesses who are alive that were there and will confirm, right? Maybe if I see him again, I'll ask him to confirm it without showing his face on camera and just share it with you. Because I know you guys believe me. I try to be as honest as I can. I'm wicked. I'm sinful. I slip. But when it comes to these things, I want to be honest. Again, let me remind you, miracles do not make someone a Christian, nor are miracles proof that you're following the truth. Like our brother, Orthodox Shada said, Hamza Yusuf became Muslim because of a miracle that happened to him. Well, that was a demonic miracle. And our Lord himself says in Matthew 24, verses 23 to 25, Matthew 24, 23 to 25, that many false prophets and false Christ will come in my name doing signs, miraculous signs and wonders to deceive, if it were possible, even the elect. So these miracles do not convince me of the truth of Christianity because I know Christianity is true. I know Jesus is God in the flesh. I know the triune God lives. I know the Bible is true, that these miracles do not surprise me. See the difference? I'm not a believer because of the miracles. It's because I know the God of the Bible is real. Jesus is alive, he's risen, and the Bible is his word, that these miracles do not surprise me. It's the other way around. Because Christianity is true, I expect there'll be miracles, both truly from God and demonic miracles aimed to deceive. I'm not a naturalist, right? I'm not a materialist. God exists. The spirit realm exists because the Bible is true and the God of the Bible is real. He is reality. And he tells me there's a spirit realm. And these spirit creatures can manipulate the natural realm and do things that we cannot do in order to deceive us. Amen. Last shall be first. So there you go. Is that clear? Just want to share that with you. So let's begin in the, the Lord's Prayer. And Lord willing, sorry about that, Orthodox. I haven't gotten back to you because I do not know if I will make it in time or I'll be there with the necessary <clears throat> conditions to bring on your friend on this Thursday. But I want to bring him on. Thanks to Orthodox Shahada, we'll be bringing on an Orthodox Christian who will be discussing the Eastern Orthodox view of the Trinity. The Eastern Orthodox view of the Trinity. What does the Eastern Orthodox teach about the Trinity, particularly the monarchy? I call it monarchy, but it's pronounced monarchia. Manas Arche of the Father. So Lord willing, he'll be on this week. Lord willing, and he'll discuss. And in my understanding, and again, guys, let me say this, trying to be humble, even though humbleness is not my strong suit. May God destroy my pride, my arrogance, my ego. May the Lord save me from unrighteousness and may he save us from false piety, fake spirituality, false humility. From my limited understanding and reading, my limited understanding and reading, the view held by these Orthodox, the monarchy of the Father, the monarchy of the Father, it is biblical and ancient. In fact, I came to that conclusion by simply examining the scriptures and following a particular Individual, I forgot the name of his site. He's not even an Orthodox, nor is he a Catholic. He's on a journey. 
where he would keep quoting the fathers on the monarchy of the father. And as I saw what the fathers were writing, and as I examined scripture, I was convinced of the monarchy of the father long before I became aware that this is the official understanding of the Trinitarian relationships in the Orthodox Church. So I didn't know that. I had already seen the validity and the truth of that from the scriptures themselves and these snippet of citations that this brother, he is a Trinitarian from my understanding. I don't know what church he belongs to. He went from being a Jehovah Witness to being a Trinitarian, but then he ended up embracing the monarchy of the Father. Monarchy of the Father. And so he helped me to see it is biblical and ancient, this understanding. The Father as the grounds or the fountain of deity. Let me repeat what this entails. One more time, we're going to begin. In Christian tradition, in Christian tradition, so we'll try to push it on Friday. The Father is the Father because he's the Father to the Son in eternity. No, I that would be, I don't know. That's a hard one. I don't know if those who accept the filioque, I have a hard time pronouncing that word, would reject the monarchy of the Father. I don't know. I'd have to ask them. I'd have to ask if those who believe in the filioque would reject the monarchy of the Father. I don't know why they would. They would probably say the Father is a source from whom the Spirit proceeds, but that procession is from the Father through the Son. So in that way, they would still say that we are safekeeping the monarchy of the Father. But I'd have to ask them. You're asking someone that cannot speak on behalf of others. Anyway, coming back to the issue, the Father is the Father by virtue of being the, the Father of the Son before creation, eternally begetting Him without a beginning. And He's also the Father in the sense that He's the source. He's the source of deity. In the Bible, the term Father can re refer to the source of something and the possessor of something, like the father of strength, the father of beauty, meaning the source, the possessor of strength and beauty. So God the Father is the Father. God the Father is the Father by virtue of being the eternal Father to the eternal Son, whom he is begotten eternally without a beginning, and he's the Father by virtue of being the source of deity, because the divine essence originates from his person, hypostases, and it is his essence that the Son and the Spirit eternally, inseparably, perfectly possess. Protestant, are you free to join me now? Thank you, Brother Ortho Christos. Through your prayers, the Spirit guide us all to the fullness of the truth. You got it, true blessing. Now, Help me to help you. Let's focus. Let's just focus. I think Protestant believer will be able to help me with the visual aid. I guess he's here. You're here? All right. Now, let me give him the link so we can begin. And, folks, you can come on later and ask me questions or challenge me after I'm done with the main presentation. After I'm done with the main presentation. So let's begin the Lord's Prayer, and we go into barbecuing Tovia Singer, this disgusting troll. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. He over off of the Father, Spirit. He over off, he over off, he over off of the Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Bring them, Father, and Joe's for your glory, not for my praise. Yehovah, Father, Son, Spirit. By the way, let me just again explain. I actually learned this from the Orthodox. What do I learn? See this positioning? Three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Two, hypostatic union. The two natures of Christ. Christ is God and man and the three persons of the Godhead, right? Sorry, I, uh, get it? So, in the name of the Father 
And of the Son, now some will go from left to right and the Holy Spirit. Okay? So I learned that from them, and I appreciate that because that means they're using all their fingers to worship and glorify God. Even their gesture and posture is glorifying God. Now, that doesn't mean the rest of you are not. I'm just telling you. They're even using the fingers to point to God and glorify God and glorify Christ the God-man. Three for the Trinity. Two for the fact that Christ is God in flesh. See? Make the use of all your fingers, your gestures, to glorify God, because we don't glorify Him enough. We don't love Him enough. We don't praise Him enough. We need to do more. Good to see you, man. How you doing? You're muted, so we can't hear you. I know you think we can read hearts. Yeah, he's muted. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can. No. Nope. What's uh, up? I can hear you. Me. So what's up with you? Talk to us. Okay. Oh, man, all kinds of stuff going on. I'm uh, uh, really busy trying to get my work done. Okay, that's it. And I'm uh, <laughs> uh, I'm changing that's over true. browsers because I found that uh, Chrome is not working worth a crap. Oh, right now. So what are you using? Are you using anything? There's a delay in your response. Is that because there's something wrong? With well, you? um, it's uh. Yeah, you're breaking up, brother. It's taking you now, seconds. The delay in my response is because I'm still looking at you through through Chrome. What are you saying? My head is shaped like a Chrome? So I'm trying to move over. Okay, so I'll give you a few seconds. All right, folks. <laughs> I'll give him a few seconds, and if he's able to share the screen, I'll do that. But here it is. Here is Tovia Singer. Let's listen. Uh, I left some timestamps for myself because it's about an 18-minute rant. Now, sadly, he's been influenced by Unitarian heretics such as Anthony Buzzer because Anthony Buzzer wrote a book. Anthony Buzzer wrote a book, and it's titled The Doctrine of the Trinity. He co-authored it. The Doctrine of the Trinity, Christianity's Self-Inflicted Wound. I want you to remember the phrase Christianity's Self-Inflicted Wound. Here it is. And I'll give you the link on Amazon where you find this book. The Doctrine of Trinity, Christianity's Self-Inflicted inflicted Wound. Self-Inflicted. Inflicted, as Holy Spirit loosens my tongue to speak clearly. Self-Inflicted Wound. This is a book co-authored by Anthony Buzzard, right? Anthony Bussaw, and some other heretic, tool of the devil, named Charles F. Hunting. Now, you're going to hear Tovia Singer talk about the Trinity as Christianity's self-inflicted wound, showing you that Tovia Singer is reading the literature, the books, and watching the shows by these heretics, tools of the devil, because they have the same father. Tovia's spiritual father is the same spiritual father of these heretics and blasphemers, and he loves to parrot Bart Ehrman. Here's the link. So, guys, we're not going to... Engage in any side talk. I'm gonna start blocking you. Class has begun. Let's focus. So now let me play Tovia Singer. Here it is. Let me get you the link. It's only about 18 minutes. We're gonna to try to play, play. Well, maybe all of it. We'll see. I don't know. Let's see. Here it goes. History. There it goes. Ah, boy. Here it is. It's. Posted September 4th, 2022, September the 4th, 2022, already 17,055 views. Rabbi Tovia Singer schools TikTok missionary who argues the Trinity is in the Shema. Okay, well, here you go. Let's begin. Now, if he's able to come back, I'll share you the page itself so you can see. Let's see. I don't know. Can you do it? Okay. You better now? Can you hear me? Yeah, now you're perfect. Okay. You see, so now, if can you, if you, can you now open up the page? We can watch it. Yeah. If you can't, that's okay. I don't want to. I don't know what you can and cannot do. That's fine. 
Do you think you can? Let me. Let me. Aleko, good to see you, brother. The live stream. Yep. So there's the link, guys. There's the link. It's about 18 minutes. We'll play it. Watch the contradictions, the lies, and the deceit in 18 minutes. This is why this guy, guys, let me be honest. He's not a scholar. He's not even a good debater. He's a joke. He's on the level of Muhammad Hijab, if not worse. He's a clown. He's pathetic. He's disgusting. That's why he won't debate anybody credible. He runs from Michael Brown. And I'm I'm letting you know, I'm not trying to boast. If I debate him on the Trinity in the Old Testament, I will pulverize him. I will bury him and destroy his lies, his blasphemies, and his false God by the power of Jehovah Jesus, his Messiah and judge. I promise you. And by the way, for the record, before you play, don't play it. Let me repeat what should be something common knowledge to all of you. I don't care for debating. Let me repeat it again. A lot of people think I'm lying or they haven't watched my sessions to know this. I do not care for debating. I only debate when you have wicked, filthy, slandering blasphemers who want to attack the truth, bully Christians. <clears throat> I will debate them and muzzle them and teach them to fear the Lord, humiliate them. Or I will debate someone who is getting notice and has a platform where people look to him and think he's an authority in order by the power of Jehovah Jesus to cut him down to size to destroy his lies and blasphemy and expose him as a tool of the devil and as a joke who doesn't know scripture, like Gino Jennings. I'd go after that clown, and I'm here saying, set up a debate with Gino Jennings. I'll go to his church, and I'll annihilate him. And my open challenge to the EF Dawa girls and SC Dawa sissies, all of you stone kissers, you pagans, all of you, and I'm on record, call my bluff, at one time, one time, all of you against me, but it's got to be on my stream, lest you try to bombard me and talk over me and muzzle me because you can't muzzle me. I have the truth, but I'll muzzle you when you run off on tangents like I did to that little girl, that troll, that demon, Gargamel, a.k.a. Ijaz Ahmed, where five hours I sat there patiently as he tried to insult me and he got annihilated. He and his boyfriend, Ibn Underwear, a.k.a. Ibn Anwar, who now shut down his website, glory to the Chine God, because the Spirit using us to destroy his arguments in writing and on that stream. Ibn Underwear, son of Underwear, his partner, and thank the Lord for Jai Apologetics. Thank you, Jay, because Jai was recording the five-hour stream, which we uploaded to my channel, because Ijaz Gargamel Ahmed, right, that little female genie, only uploaded 50 minutes of the five-hour debate because he's a filthy, vile tool of the devil like his prophet Muhammad. Okay, there you go. So I'm calling you out. But let me repeat, I don't care for debating because in debate, when you have time debates, you let the other side get away with murder because they can go on tangents. They can throw up a thousand points and never address the issues. This is why I like to interact and cross-examination because I will nail you by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right? So I don't care about debating, but if I have to, I will, to muzzle arrogant blasphemers who want to bully Christians or those who have a platform deceiving people into thinking they know the Bible, those people I will gladly put in their place. Right? That's why I'm coming after Jimmy Muhammad White and Anthony Rogers to expose them as tools of the devil and clowns because they have exposed their true nature to me. May God save people from their false teaching. Now, are you ready, brother? I'm ready, sir. Okay. Let's play it from the beginning. Okay, here we go. Lord our God is one. And what is the word used there in Deuteronomy 6.4 and the Shema? So that's the point. Christians seeking to advance that Jesus is God. He's of the same substance as the Father. He's very God of very God, very light of very light. I mean, this is the Nicene Creed. This is the language that emerged from that horrendous ecumenical council in 325 under Constantine Yamach Shemai Vizichrei, who brought idolatry to the world. Okay, pause it. Pause it. 
hear it? Hear it? This cat, I don't know what this cat wants, man. Drive me crazy. Did you hear what he said about the Council of Nicaea? It brought idolatry to the world and he castigated Nicaea. Now, you know what's sad, brethren? You know what's sad? You know what's heartbreaking? He would have William Lane Craig agreeing with him. Craig wouldn't come out and say it that bluntly, but Craig does say that the Council of Nicaea and the formulation of the Trinitarian relationships are outmoded, unbiblical, and do much more damage than good. Isn't it ironic? You have all these different individuals, whether anti-Trinitarians, whether Mohammedans, or rabbinic rabid Jews, wait the real Jesus, and even professing Trinitarians who will agree in respect to certain issues and attack, let's say, certain doctrinal formulations or councils, every one of them thinking they're doing God a service. Isn't it ironic? What Tobia Singer said about Nicaea is pretty much what Craig thinks about the Council of Nicaea and Council of Constantinople, even though he won't be as blunt in attacking it. But you saw when I read just last week, when I brought on Daniel Kakish and I brought on William Albrecht, where I read from Craig's own website, where he says, this articulation of the Trinitarian relationships, where Jesus is eternally begotten, not made, or the Spirit proceeds, outmoded, not biblical, and does more damage than good, and calls into question the eternality of the Son and the Spirit, subordinating them ontologically to the Father. Isn't that amazing? Now, let me know if the sound is good, because this is as loud as we can get it. So go ahead, keep playing. I'll tell you where to stop. Okay. So I uh, have an interesting, uh, an interesting thing for everybody today. Uh, <laughs> Rabbi, you just, you just keep disrupting every, every social media. Uh, that's out there supposedly a tiktoker is uh, is trying to uh, take you down single-handedly in uh, on this particular topic so it's really good to, this will be a good one for you to answer here look first words that a, a little jewish boy a little jewish girl learn um hear o israel the lord is our god the lord yes the lord our god is one and what is the word used there in deuteronomy 6 4 and the shema the lord our god is ahad one in Arabic, there's a similar word, it's ahad, and if you want to say one or only one, there's a word you use. And in Arabic, the word would be wahed, but that's not the word used here in Deuteronomy. It's ahad. And it's the same word used in Genesis 2.24, where a man shall leave his mother and his father and join his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now hold on here, you have multiple people being one thing. The man and his wife are now one flesh. Is that referring to one and one thing only? Well, no, there are people making that up. It's the same word used in Deuteronomy 6.4 in the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is Ahad, one. One in unity. It is not a one in aloneness. Okay, pause, pause. There you go. I will Okay, okay. Understand, first of all, praise God for this young man and his zeal that he's doing his part to glorify Jesus Christ on TikTok. May the Spirit seal him, preserve him, and guide him into the fullness of the truth. And may he continue to glorify Jesus Christ until the Lord returns or until the Lord summons him. And I pray that for all of us. So praise God for this young man and his zeal. That's number one. Number two, did you catch the context of what the young man is doing? Because I want you to see how Tovia Singer is going to flip it. Because remember, Tovia Singer's father is Muhammad's father is the Mohammedan's father, is the rabbinic Jew's father, anti-Trinitarian's father. They all have one father, the devil, which is why they are liars and murderers because they don't know the truth because they belong to Satan, their father, John 8, 44. It has nothing to do with ethnicity. It has nothing to do with your ethnicity. It has to do with your beliefs. And so they have a common father. Therefore, they're going to lie, cheat, deceive steal and murder you if not physically at least spiritually and try to bully you because they have the same father notice he's responding to tovia singer's use of deuteronomy 6 4. 
So he's trying to show that Deuteronomy 6.4 does not prove that God is a singular person. And guess what, folks? Tobias Singer, with all his rant and rave and foaming at the mouth and barking, is going to admit the word achad does not in of itself prove that God is a singular person. And that's all the young man was trying to prove. But he's going to flip it and make it seem as if the young man is trying to use Deuteronomy 6.4 to prove that God is a trinity because this deceiving slob knows he got busted because he knows that in the Hebrew Bible, the word echad is often used for compound unity, composite unity, plurality within unity. It doesn't necessarily mean a singular person. It doesn't in of itself point to singularity. It is used like the English word one in a variety of ways. And he's going to admit it. Now, don't forget, though, who quoted Deuteronomy 6.4 to prove that God is a single person? Tovia Singer. When did he do it? This clip is from his debate with William Lane Craig. That was the debate he had with William Lane Craig. So the young man, in his zeal for Jesus, and may the Spirit always put him on fire and guide him to the fullness of the truth, and I pray that for all of us, is simply responding to that lie. And Tobias Singer admits the young man was right in not so many words. But because he's a deceiver and a son of the devil, he cannot simply admit, yeah, the young man was right. You cannot use Deuteronomy 6.4, hero Israel, Yehovah, Elohinu Yehovah Echad, the word Echad to prove that God is a singular person. Because the, the use of the term Echad must be defined by context. So then why did you cite it? You cited it to prove your Unitarianism. So you guys with me? Focus, guys. You guys with me? Focus. No pontificating, no debate. This is class. Let the Holy Spirit come to the forefront. Use me as unworthy servant to bless you. You got it? Keep in mind. Now, I have articles, rebuttals related to this point. It's in the description box. And I'm going to shock you. I'm going to quote a rabbinic Jewish website, Chabad.org, where they admit Echad points to plurality, whereas Yachid points to singularity. So the young man didn't come up with this argument. Orthodox Jews, of which Tobia Singer claims to be one, agree and acknowledge and admit Echad points to plurality and unity, whereas Yachid points to singularity. And I have it in one of my posts, but I got to make sure you understand the background to catch this deceiver. The liar and deceiver is going to make it seem as if the young man was using Echad to prove the Trinity. No, he was refuting your lie that Echad cancels out the Trinity. No, it doesn't. It neither affirms nor denies it. Keep that in mind. So you got what the issue is so I can let him play the rest of it. Got to make sure this is your class and we want the Holy Spirit to teach working through me for the glory of Christ. So we got it now? And I'll talk about Ahad in the Quran in a minute. We'll do that at the end. So if that's said, continue, brother. I'll say, though, that is a, a neat comparison um, to use. Not a comparison, but me metaphorical. I even using that verse particularly because in Christianity, they try to use the egg. You know, the egg has got the shell and the yolk and... I think his example was actually better, so I'm really looking forward to your answer on it. You know, pause it, pause it real quick. Exactly. Okay, sorry guys, this is as loud as it gets. It's on their part, not on our part. So if you can't hear it, bear with us. But did you hear that guy? You guys don't know who that guy is. He's a Gentile Christian who left Christianity to become basically an Orthodox Jew. So the other guy talking about the Trinity, egg and the yolk and the shell. Egg and the yolk and the shell. No, and I'm sorry. Here, no. Singer butchers it and shows he's a liar and a deceiver. And I wouldn't use that analogy. But even in the analogy, he's going to misrepresent it. Because remember, what did our Lord say? John 8, 44. Those who hate Jesus, who's the truth, belong to their father, the devil, who's a liar and a murderer. And when he lies, he speaks his native, native tongue because there's no truth in him. So those who are controlled by Satan, like this slob is, He's going to lie. He's going to cheat. He's going to deceive. And if he has the upper hand, like a Muhammad, and he'll murder you. Guys, this is a fact. This is not a slander. You will find Jews who live in Israel confirming this, this story. 
Did you know there are certain pockets of Israel where you have these ultra-Orthodox Jews, if they catch you driving on the Sabbath, they will throw stones at your car? In fact, not too long ago, there was a video by Michael Brown. Michael Brown, when he's in Israel, and they're cussing out Jesus and spitting in his face. If these Orthodox Jews had guns or knives, they would, like the Mohammedans, behead you and kill you dead. They're just as violent as the Mohammedans. And by the way, the Lord said they are. Here, let me prove it to you. Open up Bible Gateway. Okay, open a Bible gateway if you can. Hold on. Let me just tell my daughter. Okay, mommy, no, I will order this for you. I'm on a live stream right now. Just give me a minute and we'll talk. And don't forget, pray for me. I'm coming in tomorrow, God willing. All right, now open up Matthew 23, 34 Sorry, to 36. Sorry, I just... Stop uh, breathing through the microphone, please. You're I just me. X'd out everything. Sorry. <laughs> Can you stop breathing through the microphone? Because you're scaring me. It sounds like a stalker. I'm not breathing. Okay. You mean you can you can live without breathing? You didn't know that? Okay. Just wanna you're amazing. <laughs> right. Biblegateway.com. Yeah, let me let me get the uh let me get the video back. Sorry. I don't know how far we were into it, but ah, darn it. Okay. All right. Well, you know, you put in Matthew 23, 34, 36. Okay. And then you're going to do semicolon. John 16, verses 1 of 4. John 16, verses 1 of 4. Watch here, guys. Jesus so talking the, about Jews. So what? Do you, what? What version do you want? Friend, if you like ESV, because I see you got on an ESV, you, you're a sellout. You're a betrayer. You can leave it ESV. What? Oh, okay. Okay, here you go. You Large just speak for us a little bit. Okay, there you go. Therefore, our Lord Jesus speaking, guys, notice who's going to kill the Jewish followers of Jesus. Pay attention. Therefore, I send you. He's talking to the religious establishment of Israel. He's talking to religious Jews. He's talking to his enemies, whom he called brood of vipers, white-washed sepulchers, hypocrites. Guys, focus. Class has begun. Focus. Hold on. Do, Rishab, are you a filthy, wicked, Mohammedan troll that don't respect the rules? Are you a Christian or you're a troll? Rishab Tiagi, if you keep distracting, I'm going to muzzle you and send you to Mecca to lick the black stone. If you're a Mohammedan troll, don't let your girlfriend, uh, Zachary Nayak, <clears throat> do your ba battles. You do your own battle. Because I see people engaging you because you keep bringing up irrelevant issues. Yes, and there is no God but Jesus. The same Jesus also insulted his enemies. Are you saying Jesus is a hypocrite? You fake, impious, satanic tool? In Matthew 23, the same Jesus said, love your enemies, is rebuking his enemies and insulting his enemies for being sons of the devil like you. Okay, Matthew 23. Okay, Rishab, get the hell out of here. Go to your pagan shrine, lick your idols, right? And when you see a rat, bow to it, and a cow, kiss it, because that's one of your ancestors reincarnated. Get out of here, you filthy, demonic distraction. Okay? When you see one of these rats, that's probably your grandfather who came back, right? And when you see cows, it's probably your great-grandmother so make sure you bow before them and kiss them and honor them because those are your ancestors, you rat. All right, let's begin, okay? Let's read. Matthew 23, 34 to 36. Therefore, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town. Did you guys catch it? Azad, everyone pay attention. Did you catch it? Jesus is talking to the religious Jews. And he's saying, you Jews who reject me are going to kill those Jews who follow me, whom I sent to you to preach the gospel. And some of them you're going to crucify. Some of them you're going to flog and throw them out, out of your synagogues. And you're going to do this because I'm fed up with you and your blasphemy and rejection 
an insult of me, so that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered, because that's their ancestors in corporate solidarity. The actions of their fathers are their actions, because these are their head who represented them in these acts, instead of them turning away from these acts and condemning these acts and being united to Christ. They share in that guilt because they follow in the footsteps of their fathers, murderers and liars, right? Whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Now watch John 16, verses 1 to 4. Jesus is warning his Jewish followers, your fellow Jews will kill you, will murder you, thinking they're doing a favor to God. I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you. They will put you out of synagogues. Last time I checked, the synagogues are not run by Muslims. Last time I checked, the synagogues are run by Tobia Singer and his spiritual fathers, sons of the devil, the seed of Cain. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he's offering service to God. And he's talking about the Jews who hate their fellow Jews because they love Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, the God of Israel, the God of Tobias Singer, whom the Lord is now enabling us to bring Tobias Singer beneath his holy feet. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. So Tobias Singer is a spiritual bastard who doesn't know the true God because if he did, he'd know his true son, Jesus Christ. But I have said these things to you that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. Now go to 1 Thessalonians 2, 14 and 16. 1 Thessalonians 2, 14 and 16. No, it's not true, C.V. Rose. 1 Thessalonians 2, 14 and 16. What does Paul say about the Gentiles who are being persecuted by their Gentile friends and relatives because they abandoned the worship of the gods and the goddesses of the pagans? And how does that liken them to what the Jews are experiencing? For you, brothers, became imitators. You, Gentiles, imitated the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. So like the Jews who believe in Jesus in Judea, you are being persecuted, attacked, killed by your countrymen. So in that way, you're similar to the Jews who in Judea are being persecuted, killed by their countrymen. Okay? Okay. For you suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they did from the Jews who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets. Wait, Paul, you're a Jew, aren't you? Yeah. Are you being anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish and saying that a certain strand of Jews hated Jesus so much they killed Jesus and the prophets? No. So, Paul, you are a Jew. And Jesus is a Jew and the greatest creature that God created, a woman, the queen of angels, the queen of saints, the queen mother is a Jewish woman from the line of David. So no one can say you're anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic because Jesus is God in flesh and in respect to his flesh humanity, he's an Israelite, a Jew from the line of Judah, tribe of Judah, line of David. But you're saying the Jews killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove, drove us out? And these Jews displeased God and opposed all mankind by hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles that they might be saved? So that those Jews are always filling up the measure of their sins like Jesus said they would? And that wrath has come upon them at last? Hmm, interesting. But if you say today, you're being anti-Thematic, anti-Jewish, you hate the Jews. You, you see, you're an enemy to Israel. You're not loving. You're not being Jesus. You're just anti-Semitic, Sam. And you know what's ironic? You know there are two other sources that confirm the New Testament witness that the Jews instigated the murder of Jesus, the Quran, and the Talmud. Are you aware that in the Talmud it says that the Jewish rulers called for the stoning of Jesus and asked for witnesses to come and gave them 40 days to testify on behalf of Jesus and found no one, and he was executed. The Talmud agrees the Jews played a hand in executing Jesus. 
The Quran agrees that the Jews at Muhammad's time were boasting they killed Jesus. You want me to give you those references from the Quran? You want me to give you those references from the Quran? But you're not being Christ-like. Where's the love of Jesus? Come on, white man. Where's the love of Jesus in you? Can we just hold hands? You want me to show you those references from the Quran? See why I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to have a large following and I won't be invited to these sessions and conferences because we are telling it like it is. Christian Prince is telling it like it is. Usama Daktok is telling it like it is, right? And because we're telling like it is, we won't get invited to conferences or be picked up by mega organizations to be fully funded. Pray we become men and women of integrity and not prostitute ourselves for fame and money. Okay, put Pictal, chapter 2, verse 87, 287, semicolon, 4157. The Quran even records that the Jews of Muhammad's time were boasting they killed Jesus and that these Jews were responsible for killing prophets. Here you go, 287. Okay, watch, guys, 287. And verily, we gave, we gave Moses the scripture and we caused a train of messengers to follow after him. And we gave unto Jesus, Son of Mary, clear proofs of Allah's sovereignty. And we support him with the Holy Spirit. Is it ever so that when there cometh unto you, he's talking to the Jews, a messenger from Allah, with that which ye yourselves desire, not ye grow arrogant and some ye disbelieve and some you slay? Some you slay? Well, your fat slob, that whore, Uthman, ran from... <clears throat> Balboa Park, and he's now in Hollywood because he wants to be an actor putting on a show like your prophet, a.k.a. fat boy, catch-up boy. But why don't you debate Muhammad and don't hide behind your girlfriend, Jabba the Hutt, to defend your dog Muhammad, Mahmoud. You come on, defend your prophet Muhammad so we can spread camel piss on your prophet and we'll spread camel urine on your face. Stop barking like your prophet. I'm going to humiliate your prophet. Okay, do you see in 287, it says that the Jews slew some of the messengers, the prophets. Now, 4157, Surat Anisa, 4157. And because of their saying, notice, Muhammad, the authors of the Quran, are quoting the Jews at Muhammad's time, or maybe even later. And what are they saying? We slew. We killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, Allah's messenger. They slew him not, nor crucified him, but it appeared so unto them. And lo, those who disagree concerning it are in doubt thereof. They have no knowledge thereof, save pursuit of a conjecture. They slew him not for certain. The Talmud has the Jews saying they executed Jesus. The Quran quotes the Jews of Muhammad's time, boasting they executed Jesus. Paul a Jew says the Jews executed Jesus. When are we going to stop being politically correct? And for the record, we're not saying all Jews. Don't lie and slander and misquote us. But it was a segment of Jewry. Certain Jews, specifically the religious leaders, instigated the execution of Jesus. This is a fact of history, an historical fact confirmed by the first century documents of the New Testament, even Bart Ehrman would admit to you, 1 Thessalonians is the first New Testament letter written. Bart Ehrman says 1 Thessalonians was written around 49, 50 AD. Within 20 years of Jesus' resurrection, where there are thousands of eyewitnesses still alive, hostile and friendly, and in this so-called first New Testament document written between 49 and 50 AD, Paul is unabashedly, unashamedly saying, certain Jews executed our Lord Jesus and the prophets and want to execute us. Okay? First century documents say the Jews had a hand in executing Jesus. The Quran quotes Jews at Muhammad's time saying, we executed Jesus. The Talmud, guys, don't take my word for it. Go and check Google. Even Peter Schaefer, who wrote Jesus in the Talmud, admits the Talmud says, that the Jewish leaders 
executed Jesus on the eve of Passover. Here, let's find it. Okay, hold on. Because I know you guys think I'm making it up. Okay. Hold on. Execute him on the eve of Passover. Okay. And there, there's so many of them. Here it is. There's so many sources. I just put in Talmud, Jews, executed Jesus, Eve, Passover. And here you have the Jewish Talmud, Death of Christ, Christian Courier. Babylonian Talmud on the Execution of Jesus, Cambridge.org. Let's go to Wikipedia and see it. Okay. All right. Let's see it here. One second. Here it goes. Let me give it to you. Possible Talmudic references. Okay. Let's get it here. Open it up for us, brother. Here you go. So what else you guys want? Okay. Open it up. Let's read it. So people don't think I'm misquoting. Now, some rabbinic Jews are so embarrassed by these statements. They go, oh, it's not about Jesus. Yes, it is. Stop lying, man. Yes, it is. You're lying. So watch here. There you go. Scroll down so we can get to the relevant part. Okay, right there, right there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, right there. On the eve of Passover. On the eve of Passover, Jesus the Nazarene was hanged, and a herald went forth before him 40 days her heralding. Remember I said that's what it says? Here it is. I didn't make it up. I got it from scholarly sources like Peter Schaefer, Jesus in the Talmud. And he says this is an authentic statement in the Talmud that the Jews try to hide due to persecution. Okay? Jesus the Nazarene is going forth to be stoned because he practiced sorcery and instigated and seduced Israel to idolatry. Right? Whoever knows anything in defense may come and state it. But since they did not find anything in his defense, they hanged him on the eve of Passover. Ula said, do you suppose that Jesus Nazarene was one for whom a defense could be made? He was a messit, someone who instigated Israel to idolatry. Concerning whom the merciful God says, show him no compassion and do not shield him. Deuteronomy 13.9. With Jesus the Nazarene, it was different for he was close to the government. So the Talmud is affirming Jesus was a Davidic heir, close to the government, meaning he was a physical descendant of David and therefore a rightful heir. So he was different, and yet he still misled, misled Israel into idolatry. This is in the Talmud. Now scroll up to see the exact reference. In fact, I think it gives it to you. Well, go up. No, go down, go down. You, you see where it says, no, no, up, oh, yeah, right there, brother. Sorry, I apologize. Don't get upset. I'm just getting nervous. Click on, okay, yeah, 66. Talmud, Sanhedrin 43a, and what is it citing? Go to 76. Go again, the other one, because I thought I saw Peter Schaefer. There it is. See the source? I have this in my library. Peter Schaefer. Now, let me tell you who Peter Schaefer is. He wrote an outstanding book on Jesus and the Talmud. I have it in my library. All you serious students of Christianity, apologetics, history, Judaism, Islam, get that book. Peter Schaefer is not a joke. Let me tell you who Peter Schaefer is. He's the same man considered to be one of the foremost, if not foremost, scholars on Judaism before, during, and after the time of Christ. And he's the same man that wrote this, which I did sessions on, quoting him verbatim, and I wrote articles where I cite him. Here it is. Same man who wrote this. Okay? Two gods in heaven. There you go. So what more do you guys want? The Talmud says the religious Jews executed Jesus, even though they got the details wrong. Supposedly he was stoned on the eve of Passover. The Quran quotes the Jews of Muhammad's time saying they executed Jesus. Eyewitness accounts, first century documents written by eyewitnesses, hostile and friendly. First Thessalonians, don't take my word for it. Bart Ehrman, a liberal, admits, Bart Ehrman admits, First Thessalonians was the first of the books 
that was included in the New Testament, and it was written between 49 and 50 AD. So at first Thessalonians is written 49 and 50 AD. That's within 20 years of Jesus' resurrection. Thousands of eyewitnesses still alive, hostile and friendly, and Paul, without shame, without being politically correct, says, a Jew says, my countrymen, my fellow Jews, particularly the Jewish leaders, had our Lord Jesus, my Lord Jesus, killed, as well as the prophets. Oh, but you're you're inciting to deify. You're going to get Jews killed. No. Let me repeat. As followers of Jesus Christ, let me repeat. As followers of Jesus Christ, I repeat, we have no authorization from Jesus to kill anyone who rejects the gospel, denies Jesus, blasphemes Jesus. We can rebuke them, silence them, insult them, but we cannot kill them. We don't have that right. And I'm not saying to be politically correct. I don't have that right. I'm not Muhammad. I don't slay you and take your woman and rape her. Is that clear, guys? Are we getting this? So I can move on to the point. What was my point? So you don't lose the point. Orthodox Jews are just as bloody, if not more so, just as murderous, if not more so, just as violent, if not more so, than Muhammadans. In fact, all Muhammad was was an Arabized Jew who took rabbinic Judaism mixed it with Gnostic, pagan, <clears throat> aberrations of Christianity, with his own paganism, and gave us a hodgepodge called Islam. Right? You get it? Is that clear? Musa, why don't you shut your mouth? Before I come and have the Shia molest your mother and rape her in the name of Allah and his messenger and beat her like a dog. I know you're still upset that your uncle molested you and sodomized the name of your God and the name of Muhammad. Shut your mouth, you little troll. I know you're still upset you got sodomized in the name of Allah and his messenger. If you guys weren't wondering who that picture was, here's a stalker who took a picture of my daughter, my youngest daughter, and made it his avatar. Guys, I know you wouldn't know that. That's supposedly a picture of my youngest daughter that he made his avatar. That's what he was doing. Because you understand, these Mohammedan bastards were sodomized by their uncles and relatives. So he was sodomized as a boy. So he's upset because his mother also got sodomized by the Shia when they raped her name of Allah and his messenger doing muta, but she still didn't get paid for services giving birth to this bastard. See, that was a picture that he stole from Facebook about my daughter. So you see they're stalkers, they're sick, they're demons, they're filthy. That's why he won't give his identity so that the FBI don't come and arrest him because he's a terrorist, he's a murderer. He blames us for what his mother did when she got sodomized by the Shia name of Allah and his messenger. So report this bastard. Now, if you guys know how to get their IP, get this guy's IP because I want him to get arrested because this guy's a stalker, he'll murder people. He's a murderer because he's still upset that his uncle sodomized him. All right, now glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. Now with that said, guys, are we ready? Right there, up uh, Pistol Pete. I had removed him, but here, let me show you. Here, let me put it here. Okay. Remember, there it is. That's my daughter right there. That's her picture, you see? He took a picture of my daughter from Facebook. See that? That's what he did. Now, glory to God, she's grown and she looks different. But he's upset that he got sodomized by his uncle. And he's upset that his mother got raped and sodomized by the Shia. And they didn't pay her for being the Islamic prostitute that she was. Because usually you got to pay these whores for doing muta. But they said, you know what? It's on you. We're not going to pay you. So he, now he's trying to take it out on me. Because he knows he can't touch my daughters. They're protected by Jesus, my Lord. And I have a right to defend my daughters, which is why this guy hides like he hid in the closet when his uncle came to sodomize him and molest them. There you go. See that? But they're only encouraging us to go after Muhammad more. He's not scaring me. He's not discouraging me. He's encouraging me. Watch you want to do this prophet 
And there's not a damn thing they can do. They can't stop us. Our lives in the hands of Jesus, our Lord. And as long as God gives me breath, I will annihilate Muhammad at whore. And I will take all the urine and the crap of all the rats and the dogs. And I'll spread it on Muhammad's face and Allah of the Quran. And they can't stop me. Glory to the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit. That's all they are. Yep. Don't insult whores and sodomites. They're better than him, his mother, and Muhammad. Okay, now with that said, guys, that means we're doing something good. Did I not say when I started this stream, they would start manifesting? Did I not say that? Didn't I say that? I said, in the beginning, go listen, expect them to manifest. Did I not say that? Glory to God. By them manifesting, don't you understand that's encouraging us? That shows that we're doing something right in the sight of our God by the Holy Spirit, and there's no stopping us. May the blood of Jesus be our shield. Lord, Father, Son, Spirit. All right, now let's let's continue. Now let's go back to the clip. Yep, you guys got it. I know some of you can get his IP. Get it to me because he's got to be reported because these are terrorists. And by the way, just to let you know, I know from a good source that there are FBI who monitor our pages looking for these terrorists. Someone told me, a reliable source told me, that there are FBI who are watching our channels because they are keeping track of the Muslims who come on. I'm not lying. I hope they catch this bastard. And I hope I know what he looks like. But they're not men. That's the damn problem. Okay, let's continue now. Now, before you play, don't forget the context. Let me repeat the context. The young man is not using Deuteronomy 6.4. The young man is not using Deuteronomy 6.4 to prove the Trinity. He's refuting Tovia Singer's claim that Deuteronomy 6.4 denies the Trinity by showing how the word achad is used. Keep that in mind because he's going to flip it, this liar, and turn it against the man. And he's going to admit the man was right. The young boy was right. The young man is right. So don't forget what the context is. Tobia Singer quoted Deuteronomy 6.4 to show that God is one, not a trinity. The young man came and showed the word echad, one, is used elsewhere for multiple persons coming together to form a unity. So it doesn't prove your point, Tobia Singer, that God is one person. And he's going to admit he's right, even though he's going to turn it and give the impression it's the young man who's trying to use echad to prove the trinity because he's dishonest. Keep going now, brother. Okay, you should be able to hear it a lot better now, too. Uh, an interesting thing for everybody today. Uh, <laughs> Rabbi, you just you just keep disrupting every every social media uh, that's out there. Supposedly, a TikToker is uh, is trying to uh, take you down single handedly in uh, on this particular topic. So it's really good. To, this will be a good one for you to answer here. Look, first words that a, a little Jewish boy, a little Jewish girl learn. Um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord. Yes, the Lord our God is one. And what is the word used there in Deuteronomy 6 4 in the Shema? The Lord our God is Ahad, one. In Arabic, there's a similar word, it's Ahad. And if you want to say one or only one, there's a word you use. And in Arabic, the word would be Wahid. But that's not the word used here in Deuteronomy. It's Ehad. And it's the same word used in Genesis 2.24, where a man shall leave his mother and his father and join his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now hold on here, you have multiple people being one thing. The man and his wife are now one flesh. Is that referring to one and one thing only? Well, no, there are people making that up. It's the same word used in Deuteronomy 6.4 in the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is Ahad, one. One in unity. It is not a one in aloneness. Hey, pause, pause. Well, there you go. I okay. Did you catch his argument? He's refuting Tovia Singer, who claims that Ahad in Deuteronomy 6.4 means that God is a singular person, a unity, ruling out, ruling out the Trinity. And you see what he did? He goes, no. Because achad is used in other places for multiplicity of persons or things coming together as unity. So you're wrong, Tovia Singer. That's all his point was. Now, what does Tovia Singer do? Now, let's listen to the rest of it. Keep going. 
I will say though that is a, a neat comparison um, to use, not comparison, but met- metaphorical, and even using that verse particularly because in Christianity they try to use the egg. You know, the egg has got the shell and the yolk, and I think his example was actually better. So I'm really looking forward to your answer on it. You know, all these examples fail miserably, and oh, it's oh. not the fault of these Christians. You know, they go to church. And this is pounded into their head every Sunday. They're told to believe that in, in the doctrine of the Trinity, a the church's self-inflicted wound, and so oh, wound oh. from which the church. Did you hear it? The Trinity, the church's self-inflicted wound. Boy, I wonder where he got that from. Do you see the terminology? The church's self-inflicted wound. Here's where he got it from. Brother, open up the page. Guess where he got that from? Guess what he's reading? Guess who he's watching? Guess who he's listening to? Open it up for them so they can see. Watch here. The church's self-inflicted wound. Where do you want me to go? I just sent it to you in private, sir. Don't make me lose my testimony over you, man. Oh, no. I'll let you do it all on your own, bro. Thank you, sir. That's why you exist, so I can lose my testimony so you look like a saint. Okay. You see it? Enlarge it so they can see it. What's the name of Anthony Buzzard and Charles F. Hunting's book? The Doctrine of the Trinity, Christianity, Self-Inflicted Womb. Hmm, gee, I wonder where did Tobias Singer get that expression from? Do you wonder, Protestant believer? I'm still having to think about this one now. Darn it. You want me to give you multiple choice? Yes, if you would, please. Paperback or hardcover. All right. Well, A, from his father the devil. B, from his fellow brothers and sisters who are sons and daughters of the devil. C, from those who hate Jesus passionately as he does. Or D, all of the above. So there you go. Gee, I wonder where he got it from. See where, where, who he's parroting? Unitarians, liberals, who if we reply their arguments consistently would destroy the Old Testament, historicity of much of the Old Testament. Now, let's go back and let him finish. Man, I got to look at him like this. Golly. Darn it, darn it. Has never recovered. And then the burden of the church is to find this alien belief in the Jewish scriptures. Of course, it's not to be found there. And in fact, the recording that he played was a debate that I had with probably the greatest apologist in the English-speaking world, William Lane Craig. We debated on a Christian TV show. And hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4. Pronouncing the oneness and unity of God. Pause, what pause. Can be more clear? What can, be more, what can clear? be more clear? Did you hear what he said about William Lane Craig? Did you see? He said, probably the world's greatest Christian apologist. Did you hear that? And that's sad. Yeah. There are people who have made Craig more than he is. And Craig is a dangerous tool. He's a heretic because he castigates and he undermines and he disrespects the early church, especially these outstanding spirit-filled holy men, martyrs, theologians, and apologists, because he says the way they formulated their understanding of the Father's relationship to the Son and Spirit, not only is it not biblical, it's outmoded and does more damage than good. And he calls him... Perhaps, probably the world's greatest Christian apologist. And in that debate, William Lane Craig disgraced all of us, shamed all of us, because in that debate, William Lane Craig acknowledges that if you go to the Old Testament, you won't find the Trinity in the Old Testament. So I'm going to play it. Now, before I play it, at the time, is it 3 minute 42 second mark at your time? That's correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. let's play it till 5 minutes and we're going to stop. And then I'm going to play William Lane Craig. Go ahead. Okay. All right. A little boy, a little Jewish boy learns this, and it's the last words on the lips of a Jew 
before he goes to be with Hashem when he's 120. So how do Trinitarians deal with this? Well, there are all sorts of ways to, to address this. This fellow, I don't know who he is, but he used one of the strangest ways that I've ever heard. This fellow used a very odd way, and that is to go through Arabic. And I don't know why he did that. Because as it turns out, the word ehad in literary Arabic means one alone, and it's famously used in the 112th surah. That, that's how it opens, that God is one and he's not begotten. That's the whole point of a surah that is called sincerity, essentially. Now, are you, now, are so you at the point? Why he's appealing uh, yeah. to Arabic here uh, is beyond me. It's very that strange. Is a lie. Clearly, from listening to him, Arabic is not his na native language. You can pause you there. Can pause there. I think. Okay, I'll okay. come back and I'll address Ahad and Surat al Ikhlas yeah. and show that Tobia Singer is full of it. Yeah, like his line. Yeah, I even we'll, know come, that. we'll come back to that. But here is the debate with whom Tobia Singer said is perhaps the world's greatest Christian apologist. It took place on Case Under Fire. The host was Lee Strobel, where they debated the Trinity. I played this, but let's play it again. Guys, I hope you don't, you don't mind. I'll do a part two. This is for you. I'm doing this for you. If the Spirit is pleased to use me to serve you, I will give you in-depth, irrefutable, sound exegesis of Old and New Testament passages, spiritual meat to feast on, to have absolutely no doubt, absolute assurance, the Bible is Trinitarian from cover to cover because the God of the Bible is triune and Jesus is God in the flesh. Now, I may have to do a part two, but now here, here it is. This is it. This is from Tovia Singer's own YouTube channel. He posted it. Let's listen to it. How William Lane Craig embarrassed us and shamed us because he is not the scholar that people make him out to me. May God save people from his heresies and errors and open their hearts and minds to see he's not as great as he and his fan base thinks he is. May God save us from idolatry. And don't ever make me more than I am. And don't do to me what these people are doing to these figures who are doing greater damage to the cause of Christ than good because of their capitulation to liberal scholarship and pseudoscience, thinking they're doing God a favor. So let's play it. Hi, I'm Lee Strobel. Welcome to Faith Under Fire. When it comes to tough questions about faith, the Trinity is right there at the top. Christians believe in it. Jews and Muslims don't. But the real question is, does the Trinity make sense or not? Does it stand up to scrutiny or does it crumble under close examination? We're going to find out today through a debate between Rabbi Tovia Singer, he's a radio host on Israel National Radio and author of the book Let's Get Biblical, and Dr. William Lane Craig, a research professor of philosophy at the Talbot School of Theology and author of the book Philosophical Foundations for a Christian Worldview. Tovia, let me start with you if you don't mind. Uh, the Jewish faith believes in a monotheistic God. What exactly does that mean? You know, the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, the, Almighty, the first thing the Almighty says is, Thou shall have no other gods besides me. Scripture says that God is not a man in Numbers chapter 23. So therefore, we have a, a direct misora from God that there is one, and as the Almighty says in Isaiah chapter 43, 44, 45, uh, that there is no other, that God shares his glory with no one. Okay, let's uh, pick up there, uh, uh, Bill, and talk about the Trinity. What is it exactly, and why is it important to Christians? Well, I think it is importantly to begin first by defining what we're talking about. The Trinity is the doctrine that uh, in God there are three persons, three persons in one being. And why is this important to Christians? Well, because it's true. Uh, it means that Jesus Christ is God, uh, he is equally God with the Father, and that the Holy Spirit is also God, equally with the Father and the Son, and that these three are distinct persons, but all uh, God, and that they carry out different roles in the plan of man's redemption. The Father sends the Son, the Son dies on the cross to atone for our sins and bring us into reconciliation with God. The Holy Spirit gives us spiritual life and sanctification for living 
uh, a life pleasing to God. So all three of the persons are involved in daily Christian living. Okay, Toby, you disagree. Why? I'm an Orthodox rabbi. We believe that the Hebrew Bible alone is divinely inspired and is absolutely trustworthy. And therefore, it is these texts that we look to to say, what does God say about his nature? What does the Almighty share? And all you do is look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. You know, these are the first words that a, a little Jewish boy, a little Jewish girl learn. Um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Why don't we have a clear text anywhere in the Hebrew Bible that gives us the Nicene Creed, the very clear statement of a triune doctrine? It's found nowhere in the Hebrew Bible. Our salvation depends on worshiping God in truth. Truth, and therefore, let's look at the Bible itself. That's oh, a fair oh. question. Bill, how would you respond to that? Okay, okay. Did you see he quoted Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, <clears throat> to show that the Hebrew Bible rejects the Trinity because Deuteronomy 6, 4 is incompatible with Nicene Trinitarianism. The young man, pray for that young man, support him. I don't know who he is. That will come to the fullness of the truth and mature in his faith. And I pray that for all of us. We love Jesus and mature and never fall away, never reject the spirit, but submit to the spirit. Is responding to that assertion. He's responding to the assertion that Deuteronomy 6 4 rules out the Trinity. No, it doesn't. And what's ironic, Toby Singer admits it, but in a very sly, sneaky, subtle, satanic manner. Now let's watch William Lane Cray embarrass us. Perhaps the world's greatest Christian apologist. Sadly, I used to think that until God opened my eyes and my mind. Continue, brother. It seems to me, uh, you know, we're, it, it comes down to the question of, is the New Testament trustworthy? Does it contradict, though, what the Old Testament is saying? I think that's exactly right, Lee. We're coming at this question from two different sets of Scripture or uh, holy inspired writings. And I would agree with Tobia that if you approach this question simply on the basis of the Hebrew Bible or what we would call the Old Testament, one wouldn't come to believe that God is a trinity. But pause, if you pause. approach this from the right... Did you hear it? Did you hear what he what? said? Yep. Perhaps the world's greatest apologist said, I agree with Tobia Singer. If you come to it from the Old Testament, one would not come with the doctrine of the trinity. Okay. Let's correct this misinformation. Apart from the New Testament, apart from the revelation of Jesus Christ, apart from the apostolic teaching, Jews, and here's the documentation, Peter Schaefer, two gods in heaven. He's not a devout Christian, doesn't believe the Bible is inspired, inerrant, historically accurate, doesn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Another Jewish author, when I say another, I should say author. I'm, I'm still not certain whether he's Jewish or not. I think someone told me he's German. Maybe he's a German Jew. I don't know. But the late Alan F. Siegel wrote a book called Two Powers in Heaven. Okay. Read Michael Heiser's work where he's dependent on these scholars. And they will tell you there are written sources before, during, and after the time of Christ. Writings by Jews during what they call the Second Temple Period. During the time the second temple was built, when the Jews returned, <clears throat> on the basis of the Old Testament that concluded without the New Testament, there is at least one other divine power in heaven, another, quote unquote, God. That's why the title is Two Gods in Heaven. Let alone what they said about the Spirit of God, especially in the Talmud, destroying this lie that. To conclude God is a trinity is something, depending on the New Testament, you won't derive from the Old Testament, then how do you explain these Jews, without the New Testament, seeing multiple divine persons, at least two, God and the angel of Jehovah, also called the name of Jehovah, also known as the Son of Man, and what they say about the Spirit, that the Spirit is not simply God's active force, though the Spirit is identified with God's presence, the Spirit interacts with God and prays to God, all of which is found in Jewish sources, some of which are even found in the Talmud, and all of this derived from their reading of the Old Testament. Where did they come up with it? They didn't use the New Testament. Where did they come up with it? Where did they come up with what they call 
יהובה הקטן, יהובה הקטן, the lesser Jehovah, Jehovah the younger, Jehovah the, the lesser, in contrast to Yahova HaGadol. In fact, the lesser Jehovah, the younger Jehovah, was the title given to Metatron, whom they believe was the chief angel, which later Jewish sources identified as Enoch, that when Enoch was taken, he morphed into Metatron, the lesser Jehovah, the younger Jehovah. Where did they get this from? They were not getting it from the New Testament. Okay? And this is coming from perhaps the greatest Christian apologist of the 20th century. Yeah. Who capitulates to liberal scholarship, to pseudoscience, and deceives people into rejecting the true historic interpretation of what the Bible teaches concerning the Trinity, castigating these great men of God, filled with the Spirit, who shed their blood and died as martyrs, because they were not as sophisticated or philosophical intelligent as William Lane Craig. Yeah, yeah. They needed Craig to set them straight. Sadly, Craig was born in the wrong century. Maybe he was born in the fourth century. He could have set them straight at the Council of Nicaea. Mm, yeah, yeah. You get it? Yehovah HaKatan, Jehovah the Lesser, the Younger, in contrast to Yehovah HaGadol, the Greater Jehovah. Okay? Now let's continue. Go keep on, brother. Writings of the New Testament, which uh, I believe are equally inspired by God, then the doctrine of the Trinity is taught there. And so uh, I think it will depend on which scriptures you look at to see whether or not God is a Trinity. And I would say furthermore that the doctrine of the Trinity is not in any way incompatible with anything revealed in the Old Testament. Okay, Tovia, how would you respond to that? Think about this for a moment. That means from the time of Abraham until the time of the New Testament, talking about 2,000 years, or from the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai until Christianity, uh, first century, talking about 1,300 years, the Jews, you can see, knew nothing about a trinity. God warned the Jews throughout all these centuries, worship me in the truth. You admit that they would have no idea what that truth is. Abraham spoke to God. He didn't speak to a triunity. You believe that if you don't believe in the gospel, you don't have salvation. How is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David saved without the Trinity? Isn't it more likely, isn't it clear that the Trinity was unknown to anyone? And it's a product of a Catholic church, which I frankly am surprised that Protestants follow. They're saved by responding to the revelation that God had given to them. Did you catch? It's the Catholic Church again. Yeah. <laughs> you guys caught it? Yeah, you see, Protestants got it. Poor Catholic Church. Everything's blamed on the Catholic Church. Blame the Catholic Church for everything. All anti-Trinitarian heretics, anti-Christian heretics, it's all the Catholic Church. Black Hebrew Israelites, modalists, Unitarians, rabbinic Jews, Mohammedans, you name it, anglo Saxon Israelites, the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church. The Catholic, see, the Catholic Church gave you the Trinity. The Catholic Church gave. And by the way, the Orthodox are here upset. Hey, what about us? Why are you forgetting us, dude? The Byzantine Church, the Byzantine Church, consists of the Orthodox and Catholic. We were there too, too, so blame us for these false teachings, you darn heretics. Catholic, see, they gave you everything. Hey, did you know the Catholic Church also gave you broccoli? <laughs> Did you know that? The Catholic oh, Church gave you man. cauliflower. The Catholic Church gave you rabbits and squirrels so you can shoot them and eat them. Right? Do you know what, do you know what broccoli does to me? Well, you can blame the Catholic Church for what it does to you. What does it do to you, sir? It turns me into Jupiter, the gas giant. My man, and you can blame the Catholic Church because they want you to just be... So full of yourself that just one burst and you pop because of all that gas. And make sure you don't have a lighter or a match nearby when you release that gaseous substance produced by the broccoli that the Catholic Church gave you. If we could just figure out a way to harness that power. <sighs> darn you, Catholic Church. And it's also you darn Cat Orthodox. Don't you think you're going to get away with it, Orthodox? Because we know historically the Orthodox Catholic were one. They were called the Byzantine Church, Byzantium. So you go you don't get a free pass, you darn orthodox. Darn you. 
working in cahoots with the Catholic Church. Everything's the Catholic Church. Oh my goodness. And even back then, they they secretly had the Masons working toward the Catholic Church. And did you know that Muhammad himself was groomed by a Catholic nun? Khadija was actually a Catholic nun sent by the Jesuit, even though the Jesuit didn't exist. But prophetically, they knew that the Jesuits were going to come into existence, so they set up an order in advance. And so they sent a nun, Khadija, from a convent to make Muhammad a tool of the Pope to control Arabia. But it backfired because Muhammad just rebelled against Poppy. He rebelled against more Poppy. And by the way, I'm not making it up. There's a comic book published by Chick Publications called The Prophet, where supposedly the late Alberto Riviera, who was supposedly a Jesuit, says that Khadija was a nun who was in a Catholic convent sent by her overlord to Arabia to groom an Arab to control the Arabs for the Catholic Church. What's going on? You think even Momo was a Catholic, you fucker? All right, let's continue. Oh, man. <laughs> That's so funny. And that's and that's why, why. And if they respond. Rob Reed, that's why the Catholic Church needs to be shut down. How dare the Catholic Church produce perhaps one of the worst episodes in history. We were looking for something climatic and all dissipated with one of the worst endings to a series. Darn you, Catholics. And you did the same thing with Dexter. You're evil. Evil. Go ahead to it in an appropriate way, then, uh, according to the New Testament, God applies to them the benefits of Christ's atoning death so that they are saved through Christ, even though they have no conscious knowledge of Christ, because they respond to the revelation that God has given to them. So I, I don't think we need to be di distracted from the issue of the Trinity into talking about issues of religious uh, pluralism or exclusivism, I think that's quite a side issue. Okay. We're going to take a break. Uh, Tovia, when we come back, is going to try to convince us that Jesus Christ didn't think he was God and that the authors All of right. the uh, New Testament uh, didn't believe he was God either. And so. Okay, we can, okay, stop, we can there. stop there. But you caught, but it, right? you caught it, right? From the words of the horse. By, by the way, can you mute yeah. my vo sound? I hate my voice, dude. Yeah, yeah, I just can't get to it fast enough. Sometimes. Darn it, bro. I there know you, you why you exist. The Catholic, Catholic Church, Church created, created you. you. See, there you go. <laughs> The Catholic Church not only created William Lane Craig, it created you in a lab to come to be a thorn in my side, to make me lose my testimony, so I end up sinning and have more reasons to repent. So you look like an angel and I look like the jerk. The Catholic Church created you for that reason, to come and be a thorn in my side. Darn you, man. All right. Now, guys, we're going to start now from the five-minute mark, and we're going to let Tovia rant to the 11 minute mark, and then we're gonna start the rebuttal. This was all preparatory to see what the context is. Darn you Catholics, man. Created William Lane Craig and created this guy to be a thorn in my side. Okay, now guys, listen, because I'm gonna quote rabbinic Jewish sources exposing this fraud. His own rabbis exposing this fraud concerning the terms echad and yachid. And then if I don't finish it now, I'll do a part two, God willing, on ahad in the Quran. El Quran, el Kareem. Go ahead, brother. Okay, to the 10 minute mark, you said? No, you five minute where you're at, dude, to the 11 minute mark. Stay with, just to the 11. Here. Yeah, okay. Five to 11. What he's trying to do is to say that the word echad in Hebrew means one and some sort of compound unity. That means when you hear the word one in Hebrew, echad, that means a compound of many things. And the way he sought to prove that is by quoting a passage in a Torah in Genesis chapter 2 where the Torah says that a man shall leave his, the house of his parents and he should cleave unto his wife and they should become one flesh. And the word there is echad. So isn't this a proof to everybody that you should understand that although echad means one, it doesn't mean one alone as a unity, but it means a compound unity. It means many things in one. 
So this is a very strange way he went about this. There is a very big difference between the word one and the word alone. The number one is a noun. The word alone is an adjective. They're totally different. And as it turns out, this is a false shuffle, a false shuffle because he is dealing from the bottom of the deck. Now, this fellow, I have no idea who he is. I'm sure he means well, and he's struggling to hold on to his Trinitarian beliefs. But he adopted this idea from Pastor Google. This comes from missionary websites and missionary audios and videos and books, but it's really rather silly. It's not true. And the word echad means one, the number one, it's a noun. Okay. And it's just like in the English language. But what they're doing is they're engaging in a, a biased confirmation. What does that mean? What, what he did was offer only an example of the number one used where the context shows us that it's a man and a woman, they become one flesh, right? But what he didn't do was show you any other examples. Pause, so pause. engage in a, a bias. This is the pot calling the kettle black. Did you catch how he flipped it on the young man and lied through his teeth? Are you guys catching it? This is why you need to be prayed up and ask the spirit to illuminate you to see through the lies, the sut, sut, subtle lies and the seed of the enemy. Pay attention to what he just did. Who actually tried to use a text where the word echad is employed for confirmation bias? He meant to say confirmation bias. He did. It was Tovia Singer who quoted Deuteronomy 6.4 to prove Jehovah alone. Now, he says, one is a noun, alone is an adjective, and the word echad is a noun. It doesn't mean necessarily alone, that's an adjective. And the word echad is like the English word one, and it can mean a variety of things depending on the context. You see how he flipped it on the young man? You see why I say he's a tool of the devil? No better, in fact, much worse than Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa, because he's on their level. He is a joke. He's disgusting spiritually and physically, and he's no scholar. You're the one who quoted Deuteronomy 6.4 as confirmation bias that when it says Jehovah's Echad, that means alone, no trinity. You're the one who would not quote other examples where the word Echad is used to show composite unity, complex unity, plurality and unity, and the young man was correcting your lie, your deceit, your misinformation, and now you're flipping it on him. Did you guys catch it? See how he did it? But how many of his zombies, his, his Jewish zombie followers who worship at his feet, will be thinking this critically to catch him in his lie? Wait, 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 hold on. You're quoted Deuteronomy 6.4. Why didn't you mention all the other examples where echad is used to refer to a compound unity, a complex unity, plurality and unity? Why did you shuffle the deck and only quote one example where you read into the word echad alone, singularity, unity, ruling out trinity? You're the one engaging in confirmation bias, you wicked slandering tool of the devil. And you're slandering this young man. You guys caught it? Keep reading. I mean, keep playing now, all the way to the 11 minute mark. ...of evidence by subverting other passages in the Bible. That's why it's a false shuffle. That's why this is dealing from the bottom of the deck. I mean, why didn't he give an example of Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 6? Deuteronomy 17, the context, it's about courts, torts, courts. Um, witnesses and the Torah says listen very carefully al pishnayim edim o shalosh edim yumas hames according to the testimony of two or three witnesses can a person be executed put to death lo yumas al pi ed echad however a person may not be put to death on the testimony of one witness well, is that a compound unity or not? No. So what you do is you play the game. This is like 
you know, when you, you observe missionary activity, it's like going to a magic show. And I, I think what many people do when they go to a magic show is they try to figure out, like, how, how is he doing this? So that, that's what this is. But it's not a magic show that is what you would see on Broadway or you see in Las Vegas. This is like, like watching a five-year-old doing a magic show where it's so transparent. This is so soft work. Again, I don't... Okay, what, yeah, what's the time mark now? It's 8.55. Okay. Guys, you see, he just projected onto the young man the very thing he's guilty of. He's accusing a man what he's guilty of. He's saying, why did the young man quote this verse where it refers to a single person? No, on the contrary, Tovia Singer. He's responding to you, quoting Deuteronomy 6.4, where you cite a text where God is said to be achad and fail to inform your audience that the word achad is used in a variety of ways, depending on the context, some of which refers to a single person, but in other places, it refers to a compound unity, a composite unity, plurality and unity. This tool of the devil is doing the very thing he slanderously accuses the young man of doing. It wasn't the purpose of the young man to show you examples where echad refers to a single purpose. His purpose was to expose you, you, for assuming without proving that echad means God is a singular person. When you know, supposedly the Hebrew, echad is used in a variety of ways. In some instances, it refers to a singular person, not a singular pers purpose. Sorry, I misspoke. May the Holy Spirit save me from error. Yes, it can refer to a singular person, but it's also used in reference to compound unity, complex unity, plurality and unity, and that's all the young man was showing. The young man was calling you out for assuming without first proving that God being achat means he's a singular person ruling out Nicene Trinitarianism. When now you're going to admit, he's going to admit, the word one, must be defined by context. Well, why didn't you say that in your debate with William Lane Craig? Why don't you say that in all the other debates and sessions you've had where you keep parroting Deuteronomy 6.4 as if saying God is one means he's not a trinity. So now I'm going to return the favor. If you go to your private chat, open up that article. Now let's see. Yes, no one disagrees. For the record, I repeat. No one disagrees that the word echad is used for a singular person. The point is, it's not only used for a singular person, okay? It's also used for compound unity, complex unity, plurality and unity. Therefore, to quote a text where it says, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is echad, tells me nothing. Okay, echad what? He's one what? One person, one community, one attribute, one characteristic. To simply quote a text that says God is echad tells me nothing about the nature of God's echadness. And here, let me prove it. Now, if you can, do compound F or control F and put Genesis 2, colon, and it's going to take you to the relevant section. Okay, Genesis 2, right there. Now, let's see all the places where echad is used in reference to Compound unity, multiple things or persons coming together to form a unity, complex unity, plurality and unity. Well, we already looked at Genesis 2, 224. Go to the next one. Then Pharaoh sent and called. I'm going to read if you keep scrolling down. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, <clears throat> I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst, you can understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. I don't have the ability to interpret. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, that means cattle, fat flesh, very big and chunky like Protestant believer, and well-favored. 
And they fed in a meadow, and behold, seven other kind cattle came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean flesh, lean and sickly looking, much like razzles, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind, ate up Protestant believer and his six brothers. <clears throat> and when they had eaten them up, it could not be known <clears throat> that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored, ill-sickly looking like razzle as at the beginning. So I woke and I saw in my dream and behold, seven ears came up in one stock, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered, thin and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them and the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that declared it to me. Now watch. Two dreams, right? Two dreams. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. Though they're true dreams, they are one and the same because both dreams have one and the same meaning. So now two dreams are echad. God hath showed Pharaoh what he's about to do. Two dreams are echad. Let's read the next next one. And they came unto the brook of Ishkol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. A hot cluster, a cluster that had multiple grapes. Not one grape, many grapes, but they're all one attached to one cluster. And they bear it between two upon a staff and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. Now, by the way, this article, it's in the description box. Guys, I've done the research. I've gathered these verses all in one post for you, free of charge. Seek the face of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Spirit to help you understand what you see, hear, and read correctly, and share it accurately. It's there. Use it, my brothers and sisters. That's why I'm doing it for you, to be used by the Spirit to empower you to be lions and lionesses devouring these wicked slobs of the devil for the glory of Jehovah Jesus. Okay, now let's go to the next example. That's that's from the same book that he quoted, uh, Numbers. Numbers 13, 23. Now watch this one. Then all the children of Israel, multiple human beings, countless number of human beings, all the children of Israel went out and the congregation was together as one man. A chad man. So multiple human beings? Multiple human beings? Miss Wur, well, it's better than having a mother who's a whore who went around whoring herself free of charge, giving bastard birth to a bastard like you. So shut your mouth before we spread camel piss on you. All right. Multiple human beings? As one man? A chad? From Dan even to Beersheba with the land of Gilead unto the Lord Jehovah and Mizpah and all the people, notice people, multiple human beings, guys, arose as one man, Echad. How can multiple men, multiple women, multiple children be one man, Echad? Now I got to see what the word man is. I should have included it. Okay. We will not any of us go to his tent, neither will we, any of us, turn into his house. Okay, now we got more. Well, I did I sell I post it? Well, let me give you another one. I didn't post it, right? Was that it? I should have posted Second Chronicles 30, 12. I didn't post it here because I'm stupid, right? Okay, well, hey, don't you call me stupid. Now, let me show yeah, you one more. You Can you open up Second Chronicles 30, 12 in your browser? Second Chronicles 30, verse 12. I should have gave that one. I don't know why. Then that's okay, guys. I'll show it to you now. It's all in that article, but this one I didn't include. But here, what does in Judges 21, it says one man. Guess what it is? Ke'ish echad. Ke'ish. Ish is the word for male or husband. So all of them were like one male, one husband. Here it means male. Now, in Second Chronicles 30, verse 12. Show, show me if it's 2 Chronicles 30 verse 12, because that's not 30 verse 12. You see? You said verse 1. I said 12, you little slandering. Okay. Now watch <laughs> here. 
2 Chronicles 30, verse 12, the hand of God was also on Judah. Judah is an entire habitation, multiple human beings living in Judah. And what did God do? Give to them one heart, multiple human beings, male, female, young and old, right? All of them having one heart to do what the king and the princes commanded by the word of the Lord Jehovah. How can multiple human beings, males, females, young and old, all have one heart? Echad lev. Here, let me show it to you. Let me get you the link. Now, by the way, brother, I sent you the link to Judges 20, verse 1. Open it up for them so you can see it with their own eyes. Here it is. Right there. It's in the private chat. Watch. Okay. So open it up, and I'm going to show you what Second Chronicles 30, verse 12, the Hebrew is. Why didn't Tobias Singer give you these examples? Lying about the young man, slandering the young man, attacking straw man, throwing out red herrings, accusing the young man of what he himself did. What he did. Not the, he, you did that. You withheld these information. The young man is correcting you. You fake. I don't know why people think this guy is a threat. He's a joke on the level of Muhammad Hijab. Okay? Now, do you see where it says, watch here, Judges 20, verse 1, it says, as man, one. Do you see it? Ke'ish echad. The word for man is ish. It's not the word Adam. Ish is the term in Hebrew for a male. It's not a female. When you want to refer to a female, you say isha. Here it's ish, male. Also the word for husband. So the entire group, rose up as one male. Ke'ish echad. Habarim. Okay? Now, Second Chronicles 30, verse 12. Second Chronicles 30, verse 12. Let me get it for you. I thought I had it here. Here it is. And then we can move on to other points. Kind of a guy who names himself after women's clothes anyway. How dare you, sir? You're right. <laughs> Don't be a swinger, sir. I mean singer. There it is. Now Let's watch here. Hijab. Man, that's Mimi Nikap, sir. Can okay, I watch here? Open up 2nd Ronald 30, verse 12. Watch here. What is the word for one heart? The word for one and the word for heart. Here it is, guys. Watch here. Biblehub.com. Watch here. You see what it says? Scroll down. You see? Leb echad. Lachem leb or lev heart Echad. One heart. Lev, lev, echad. But wait, guys. This is referring to the whole Judean habitation. Hundreds of thousands, not millions, of Jews living in Judah. And they have one heart. Lev, echad. You guys caught it? You see the deceit, right? You see the deceit? Now let him let finish his point. Go back. Let him finish because I got more. You think this is embarrassing? Wait, I'm not done yet. We're going to do a part two, God willing. Okay? Let him finish. I don't mean anything against this boy, whoever he is. He's just regurgitating stuff he's heard from missionaries and why he goes to Arabic, what bearing that has on Tanakh, I have no idea. And as it turns out, he selected very poorly from a word in literary Arabic, which had appears in the Quran to mean one and one alone. So he, he, he picked the worst possible language and the worst possible source to true. prove something Trinitarian. Moreover, then, if it is the case, then it is, that the word echad operates exactly the way the word one it, operates it. in the English language, well, then how do you know? So we you know what missionaries you you? do. They play the game, hide the ball. They're dealing from the bottom of the deck. They're showing an example where the word one, echad, is used, where it's a compound unity. It represents a compound unity in that passage. And then there are other passages where echad means one and one alone. So it raises the question of like, well, how do you know then? 
And the answer is very simple. Well, if you're listening to me and you understand what I'm saying, that means you understand the English language. Well, when you encounter the word one in the English language, how do you know if it's one alone or many? Well, the answer is always the context. Wait, the wait, context pause. The tells us. What did he what say? Did he it's the context? Word. Hold on. So why did you quote Durami 6.4 and automatically assume that God is one means he's a single person ruling out Nicene Trinitarianism? Why did you assume that Ichad in of itself proved your position when you just backpedal like a good Mohammedan demon, a tool of Satan, no better than these Mohammedan jihadis, because you all belong to the same spirit, same father, which is why you're all being crushed under the feet of Jesus, your God and judge. Muhammad's God and judge because Jesus is alive. He is reality. He is your Lord. And your rabbis are dead and buried under his feet. Live with it, Tovia. You can't dethrone yeah. King Jesus, but he's dethroning you and your fake rabbis. So you just admit, Echad can mean plurality, but it can also mean singularity. And how do you know? Context. That's exactly what we've been saying. Finish in, Arabic, finish in Arabic, ahad means one of. We're going to get to that in part two. But finish, but let, finish, him, finish let him finish. Us, if there's one unity, such as a man and a woman become one flesh, Genesis chapter. So then we see that when it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And the, pa and the chapter continues that there is only one God, and you may swear by no one else but the Lord, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. So the context tells you that it's one alone. And that's all you have to do. This is not fancy. You don't need any – just use your head. But okay, it pause is – that, That's 11 minutes, Mark, dude. Stop. So, guys, in part two, I'm going to show you that the context shows that the God of Israel is not a singular person. That will be in part two, and I'll just add. What I want to do now is I'm going to use rabbinic sources because we're already over two hours. Lord willing, this week, if through your prayers, travel mercies, I arrive safely, spend time with my daughters, and God protects us miraculously in Jesus' name, I'll be doing live streams there. You heard from the donkey's mouth. Achat can mean plurality or it can mean singu singularity, singleness, and you have to derive it from the context. So he backpedaled. Did he say that when he debated Tovia Singer? I'm sorry, when he debated William Lane Craig? Did he say, well, here is the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Here one contextually means God is a single person, or he already assumed that meaning without bothering to prove it. And when this man busted him, he now backpedals, attacks straw man, throws out red herrings, demonizes the young man, accuses him of what he's guilty of. Context. It's all from the context. Now, let's play one more clip for now, and I'm going to show you what the rabbi said about Ichad to expose this fraud. And, guys, the articles are there in the description box. Lord willing, in part two, we'll go in greater depth, but it's there now in the description box. All the information you need that is irrefutable if you seek the Spirit to enable you to understand the arguments and present them accurately, you can't be refuted. They'll avoid you. And they will vilify you and demonize you because that's all they can do because you have the truth and stalk you and try to threaten you as if we're scared. We're shaking. Jesus lives. The rabbis are dead. Muhammad is dead. They're under the feet of Jesus. And these dogs are being muzzled. This dog is being muzzled by Jehovah Jesus, his master and judge, unless and until he repents. And may God continue to embolden us to be filled with passion and filled with the spirit to never back down, never compromise. And love Jesus even unto death or until he returns. Now, go to the 17 minute, 40 second mark, because he's going to repeat this point context and the barbecue. And then we're going to do a part two, Lord willing, this week. Okay. And start from 17 minute, 40 second mark. Let him start barking again. One and the word alone are two entirely different words in any language. One's a noun, one's an adjective. Okay? There is a way to say one, the number one, one. 
in Hebrew, and that's echad. And the way you know one of what is being conveyed is the context, just like in the English language. There, there is there's nothing mysterious about this. Pause, pause. And it's, it's vital. Did you hear it? Echad is like the English word one. And how do you know what it means? From the context. There's nothing mysterious about it. Then why do you constantly engage in confirmation bias and you quote Deuteronomy 6.4 and assume that the word echad in of itself proves that God is a singular person, rules out Nicene Trinitarianism? You caught it? That's why I had to do this barbecue and destroy this fraud. You're a fraud and you're a slob and you're a disgusting looking slob because you're demonized and you manifest. That's why Jesus is muzzling you at our hands by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray you repent before it's too late because it's too late for your dead rabbis who are burning under the feet of Jesus. Okay, but now you see that article? It's in the description box. I just posted the link. I'm going to quote Chabad.org, an article they uploaded. What do Orthodox Jews say about Echad and Yachid? And what's the difference between the two words? Was that young man right? Let's see. Open it up, brother. I send in a private chat. Okay, watch here. Chabad.org. And I quoted them in the article. You're going to see what they say about Echad and what they say about Yachid. There's the article, guys. It's in the description box. I'm getting the research for you so you don't have to spend time. It's there. Your responsibility, study the material, listen, understand, and present them accurately, and you're on your way to be lions and lionesses for Jehovah Jesus, who's worthy that we fight for his glory, though he doesn't need us. Now, here's what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to tell you where to scroll down to. Hold on one second. If you do command F or control F, I don't know what you have, and you put in the word Echad, E-C-H-A-D, Okay, and it's going to take you to that relevant section. Do it again. Don't just do it once before the rapture. There you go. This section. Now you can just exit out so we don't see it. X out your box. Okay, here you go, guys. This is from my article. And what am I quoting from? Let me show you what I'm quoting from before you do that. Let me see where does it start the quote. Yep. I want you to go to this section where it says what makes this interesting. Scroll down. Okay. Now, right here, I'm going to quote Menachem, Menachem, I have a hard time with these Jewish names, Mendel Schneerson, right? The late Lubavitcher Rebbe. Menachem Mendel Schneerson, whose followers thought he was Moshiach, the Messiah. Who? The late Lubavitcher Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson, whose followers thought he was Moshiach. In fact, some actually think he may come back again as Moshiach. What did he say about Echad and Yachid? Echad is the word used in Deuteronomy 6 for hero Israel, Jehovah our God, Jehovah is one. Yachid is the word used in Genesis 22, 2 and 12. In Genesis 22, verse 2 and 12, we're told that Isaac is Abraham's Yachid. Some will pronounce it Yachid. Yachid, Yachid means unique, one and only, right? The only one of its kind. The stress is on uniqueness. So Isaac is called the Yachid of Abraham. Well, he's the unique son. So understand the difference. Yachid is the term that stresses on the uniqueness, right? That this is someone or something that's unique in a category all on its own, of its own. You with me there? You understand the difference between Yachid and Echad? In Genesis 22, 2 and 12, Isaac is said to be the Yachid of Abraham, not his Echad, because though Abraham had other sons, Isaac was the Yachid. Some will say Yachid. The unique son. The only son of his kind, all the other sons, could not compare to him. The incomparable son. So the word yachid stresses the incomparability, incomparability, uniqueness. 
of a thing or an entity. Everyone with me before I move on? You understand the difference? I can't move on if you're not getting this. Everyone got it? Come on, guys. Give me some feedback. I don't know if they're frozen. No one's responding. You got it? All right, good. All right, thank the Lord. Now watch this. What did Manachim Mendel Schneerson say about Ichad and Yachid and why they're different? Let's quote. There it goes. The relationship, this is now Schneerson's words. This is him. I'm quoting him now. These are his words. Quote, the relationship between Moses and Moshiach is reflected in the numerical value of their names because in each Hebrew letter, a letter represents a number. So the numerical value of Moses' name equals the numerical value of Moshiach's name. That's what Schneerson is saying. That's him. I'm quoting him now. The relationship between Moses and Moshiach is reflected in the numerical value of their names. In the holy tongue, he means Hebrew, each letter also a number. So that a word is also a string of numbers. The sum of these numbers is the word's numerical value or gematria. The gematria of a word represents a deeper stratum of significance then it's linguistic meaning. So the rabbis will look at the numerical value of names to see their deeper spiritual significance. This is known as gematria. Okay, anyway. So the fact that two different words have the same numerical value indicates, so if you have two words that have the same value numerically, indicates what? What does it indicate, Schneerson? That they are variant expressions of the same truth. So they both point to the same truth. The numerical value of Moshe, Moses' name is 345, and that of Moshiach, 358. So the difference between Moses and Moshiach is rep represented by the number 13. Otherwise stated, Moses plus 13 equals Moshiach. Scroll down. Don't wait for the rapture. 13 is the numerical value of Echad. Do you see what he said? A word that is the keystone of the Jewish faith. Do you see what he's doing? He's doing Jamatra, where he's find, trying to find the secret mystical meaning of names. So Moshe is 345. Moshiach is 300. 13 is, what was it? 345 and 13. Go back up again. I'm bad at math. 358. Scroll down. Okay. So if you take 13 from Moshiach, then it equals 345. But Echad, the numerical value of Echad is 13. So embedded in Moshiach is the numerical value of Echad and Moses' name combined. That's what he's telling you. If you take Moshe and Echad and combine them, their numerical value is 358. The exact numerical value of the word Moshiach. So Moshiach combines Moses and Echad together. <gasps> wow. You understand what he's saying here? 13 is the numerical value of a chad, word that is the keystone of the Jewish faith. Every morning and evening of his life, the Jew recites the verse Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is Echad. The Jewish people are called an Echad nation on earth. An entire people consisting of millions of lives, Echad, they're one nation? Hmm. Because they reveal the echad of God in the world. Now, get ready to be blown away. I don't know if you're catching this, guys. I hope you're awake. Schneerson is saying Israel, that's composed of millions of Israelites at that time, 600,000 men. And if you include women, children, at least 2 million. So a nation of at least 2 million are called echad nation. Echad nation, one nation. Why are they called echad? Because their echadness their oneness is reflecting God's echad. Like the nation of Israel's echad, so is God. They're reflecting the fact that God is an echad. How? If the nation consists of multiple human beings forming unity, how is that a reflection of God being echad? Watch what he says. The Jewish people are called an echad nation on earth because they reveal the echad of God in the world. And the Arab Moshiach, is described as the day that God will be Echad. He's quoting now Zechariah 14, verse 9, and his name Echad. Watch what he says, guys. Echad means one. The Shema proclaims the oneness and unity of God, which the people of Israel are charged to reveal in the world. 
and which will be fully manifest in the era of Moshiach. But is Ichad the ideal word to express the divine? Now this guy waits. Dude, why do you wait to scroll down? Can you explain to what, why you Sorry, do? man. My wife just called me, dude. Sorry. Again? You blame your wife for your sins? Man, bro. Dude, you know, I'm married. Yeah, but don't blame her for your sins. You're the sinner. Take responsibility, man. You're the head. You're the head sinner. You're the chief sinner. Well, you know, when she talks, I better listen. You know that, right? Exactly, man. Sinner. But is Echad... Now, notice what he's asking, Schneerson. Is Echad... The right word to use to describe God? Look, but is Echad the ideal word? Should that have been the word to express the divine unity? Look what he says. Guys, listen. This should be music to your ears. Is Echad the right word to use to describe God's unity? Why Echad? Like its English equivalent, the word does not. Let me repeat it two more times. Does not. Does not preclude. Echad does not exclude. The existence of other objects, as in the sequence one, two, three, nor does it preclude, exclude its object being composed of parts. We speak of one nation, one forest, one person, one tree, despite the fact that each of these consists of many units or components. It would seem that the term yachid, which means singular and only one, more clearly expresses the perfect simplicity of God, which, when we scroll down before the rapture, which Maimonides states to be the most fundamental principle of the Jewish faith. And I'll explain that in a minute. The axiom and the axiom that there is none else besides him. Deuteronomy 434. Now watch what Schneerson says. Hasidic teaching explains that, on the contrary, Echad represents a deeper unity than Yachid. Yachid is a oneness that cannot tolerate plurality. If another being or element is introduced into the equation, the Yachid is no longer Yachid. Echad, on the other hand, represents the fusion. Sounds like the word Tawheed. Just like the Arabic Tawheed, Wahda means to unify, to consolidate, to make one. Here Schneerson saying, Echad, on the other hand, represents the fusion of diverse elements into a harmonious whole, the oneness of Echad is not undermined by plurality. Say what? The oneness of Echad is not undermined by plurality. Indeed, it employs plurality as the ingredients of unity. Say what? Echad employs, includes plurality as the ingredients of unity. And this is... Manachim Mendel Schneerson, the Lavabacher Rebbe, whose followers thought he was Moshiach. Now, where did I get this article? Chabad.org, an Orthodox Jewish website. Click on it so you guys don't think I just made it up. Click on it. See where does it take you. There you go. I don't know why we see the back. Is that it? Okay, scroll down a little bit. There you go. There it is, from Chabad.org. Did you hear what Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the Lavavager Rebbe, whose followers thought was Moshiach, said, Echad includes plurality as one of its main ingredients. Echad encompasses plurality, fusion of parts coming together, consolidating them. It is yachid that excludes plurality. It is yachid that means singleness, singularity alone. And he admits that God inspired Moses to use echad because God's unity is much deeper and richer than the word yachid would allow for. Bless you. Wow. Did you remember he mentioned Moses Maimonides? And Lord willing, I'm going to do a part two on all this. Why is that important? Moses Maimonides was a medieval Jewish rabbi who hated Jesus Christ, Christianity, and hated Islam and Muslims. And he wrote the 13 articles of faith. 
These are the 13 articles of faith that every believing Jew must affirm. These are the creedal affirmations of rabbinic Judaism, the 13 articles of faith. In one of those articles, a Jew must affirm the coming of Moshiach. And if you deny that Messiah is coming, then you are a heretic and apostate. So one of the 13 articles, he insists, a Jew must affirm that God will send Mashiach. And even though he tarries, I will wait for him. And if you deny that Mashiach will be sent, then you're not religiously a Jew. You're an apostate. You're cut off. Now, what makes his 13 articles of faith amazing? You know what he did? He quotes Deuteronomy 6.4, Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Yehovah, Eloheinu, Adonai, Yehovah, Echad. But guess what he did? Like Muslims, he didn't go with the exact wording that the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, inspired Moshe to write down and recite verbally in Deuteronomy 6.4 because they would recite it and Moses wrote it down by inspiration of Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. The word that the Holy Spirit inspired Moses to use was Echad. So when you read Deuteronomy 6.4 in Hebrew, it's Shema Yisrael Yehovah Elohim Yehovah Echad. You know what Moses Maimonides did? He changed it to Shema Yisrael Adonai Elohim Adonai Yachid. He replaced the word Echad by Yachid. And yet he's not a prophet. He's not inspired. Why would he replace the very word that the Holy Spirit gave Moses to recite and write down as part of the Torah with a word not given by the Holy Spirit? Why did he do that? In fact, in two of my posts, we're going to look that up right now to show you. Watch here. If you go to the description box, let me open up the other two. One is an article from Jews for Jesus, Jews for Jesus, that I uploaded for perpetuity. I'm curious how you say this word. Good. Is it Which one? Good. good. The, the oh, yeah. D dash D. That's right. And the word. Yep. Lurk. It's right. D, D dash D. Here's the article, guys. Open it up for us. It's an article from Jews for Jesus that I uploaded for perpetuity in case their website shuts down. Here it is. He's going to show it to you. And we're, all, we're going to be done with part two. God willing, with your prayers, I'll do part two. We're going to be done with part one. As Holy Spirit saves me from stammering and error and confusion and illuminates us. To know the truth and live it out. Posted by Jews for Jesus, April 20, 2018. Don't Christians believe in three gods? The links are in the description box. So you go read them at your own leisure. Now here's what you're going to do. Open up Command F. Put in M A. I am O. Okay. Now watch here. Let's go up a little more. A little more. Just a little more. Okay. Go up right here. We're going to read this. Watch what they say about Moses Maimonides. Even more striking is the very word used in Shema, the Shema, to proclaim the oneness of God, Echad. This word allows. Do you see how careful they are? They don't say it demands, and it must mean plurality. That's not what they say. It allows for a plurality or diversity within unity. You caught it? It allows for it. This can be seen, especially clearly in several passages. Genesis 1.5. I'm supposed to make the, the, the next five smaller font. My apologies. Genesis 2.24. I'll go back and correct it. Ezra 2.64 and Ezekiel 37.17. The oneness is the result of combining evening and morning, man and wife, the individual members of an assembly, and two sticks respectively. There is, however, another word in Hebrew to describe an indivisible unity, namely yachid. It so happens that the scholar Maimonides, when composing his famous 13 articles of faith, substituted yachid, for Echad, in describing the nature of God. Why would he do that? If Moses Maimonides did not see and wasn't troubled by the fact that God is called Echad because he was aware Echad will allow and open up the door for plurality within God, 
And he couldn't tolerate that. So then he then substituted Echad for Yachid. Why did he change it? Why would Maimonides change the word that the Holy Spirit gave Moses to recite and record as part of the affirmation of God's unity, Echad, with Yachid, if Maimonides didn't realize and didn't see that Echad does not exclude a plurality within God, and can be used by Christians to argue God is a plurality in unity. So therefore, what he did was he changed it to Yachid. You wouldn't need to do that if Ichad proved Tovia Singer's point. If Tovia Singer was right, Ichad in of itself shows that God is a singularity, which he, he himself denied. He said, no, you got to glean that from context. Then there would be no reason to replace it with Yachid. Right? If Ichad was sufficient to prove that God is a singular person, why substitute it with the word Yachid? You guys got it? So let me finish it. It so happens that the scholar Maimonides, when composing his famous 13 Articles of Faith, substituted Yachid for Ichad in describing the nature of God. Ever since, the notion of an indivisible unity of God has been fostered in Judaism. Nevertheless, the Bible gives ample instances to show that there's a diversity within God's unity. So now let me blow you away. What does the Zohar, which is a book of Jewish mysticism called the Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, which is an amalga amalgamation, 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 say that five times, please, of Hinduism, of Gnosticism, of paganism, Christianity, mixed in, Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism from the pit of hell, the book of Zohar, how do these Jewish mystics explain Deuteronomy 6.4? Scroll down, let's read. This is from the Zohar. This is from their section on Deuteronomy 6.4 before the rapture as he scrolls down. How do they explain Deuteronomy 6.4? Guys, Zohar. Jewish mysticism, part of Kabbalah. How did these Jews, these mystics, explain the Ryan 6-4? Hero Israel, Yahweh, Elohino, Elohino, Yahweh is one. These three are one. Now watch. How can the three names be one? Only through the perception of faith. Only when you have spiritual eyes to see that these three names become one. Three names, huh? In the vision of the Holy Spirit, you need the Ruach HaKodesh. In the beholding of the hidden eyes alone, the mystery of the audible voice is similar to this. For though it is one, yet it consists of three elements, fire, air, and water, which have, however, become one in the mystery of the voice. Even so, it is with the mystery of the threefold divine manifestations designated by Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh, Yahweh, three modes which yet form one unity. Say what, Kabbalah? Say what, Zohar? Say what, Jewish mystics? Deuteronomy 6.4 refers to three names, three modes of God that form a unity. So God is a threefold unity, three names, three modes as one. That's the Zohar, the book of the Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism written by Jewish mystics who are anti-Christian, anti-Trinitarian. And they say the reason why Deuteronomy 6.4 has God's names three times, Yahweh, Yahovah, Eloheinu, Yahweh, Yehovah, three times, because this refers to the three modes forming a unity, the three names, three modes of God forming a unity. Even they saw that? Even they saw that? Finally, so we can wrap it up. You guys caught it? Finally, so we can wrap it up, we're going to go to the final article. And Lord willing, I promise you in part two, I'm going to quote the Hebrew Bible to show that God's oneness includes a plurality of persons and will deal with Ahad if the Lord wills. But the final one, you ready? The final one. Here's this article right here. Let me open it up. It's in my description box. This one is a letter written 
by a Jew who became a follower of Jesus. He ended up becoming a follower of Jesus, worshiping and loving the triune God. And he's writing to his rabbi, Rabbi Cohen, an actual letter, a correspondence of letters that he then put together as a pamphlet, which is now uploaded on the net. Let me get it for you. Okay, let me get it for you. Hold on one second. Because I'm going to show you what he says, one of his complaints. Letters to Rabbi Cohen concerning Messiah. Here it is. The man who wrote this, his name was Steve Schwartz. He ended up following Jesus and started believing and worshiping the triune God and worshiped the Lord Jesus as God in the flesh. Edwin, shut the hell up. Stop distracting us before I send you back to South America. Shut up, young kid. Class is in session. Don't be a tool of the devil or you're going to get muzzled. There it goes, guys. There it goes, guys. Let's open it up. Watch here. And we're going to wrap it up. And we're going to do part two, Lord willing, this week, if the Lord wills. So what's the name of it? Okay. Letters to Rabbi Cohen concerning Messiah. The following is taken from letters from Steve Schwartz, a Jew, to Rabbi Cohen. And I posted here in order to ensure that it doesn't disappear from the web. He wrote a series of letters to his rabbi saying, why didn't you teach us this? Why weren't we taught this? Why did you hide this from us? As he embraced Jesus as the Jewish Messiah and started worshiping and loving the triune God. Okay? So now, what does he say about Maimonides? So open up, control F or command F and put in M-A-I-M. And go to the relevant section. Here you go. I'm sure you know the meaning of the two words, yachid and echad for one. Why is the word echad, meaning a composite oneness, used to describe God in the Shema, while Moses Maimonides uses yachid, meaning absolute oneness, in his 13 articles of faith? Is Maimonides trying to dispose of Old Testament evidence in support of the triunity of God? You think? Now notice what else the Jews do. I don't know if you know this. Stay right there. The Jews have weekly readings called half Torah readings. Similar to the liturgical readings of churches, the ancient apostolic churches, the Coptic, Assyrian, Catholic, Orthodox churches, where you have liturgical readings daily and weekly. The Jews have weekly readings called half Torah readings, where they read a portion of the Torah and a prophetic book and these are cyclical cycles, right? Every week, right? You read that particular half Torah reading, selected, and it's the same all over the world. Just like any Orthodox church you go to, they'll all be reading the same weekly liturgical reading no matter where you're at. Well, same thing with Orthodox Judaism. But did you guys know that in the Hath Torah readings of the Jews in the synagogues, when they come to Isaiah 52, the week after, you'd expect they'll read Isaiah 53, but they deliberately overlook it, have expunged it from the weekly Hath Torah readings, and they don't read it. They go from Isaiah 52 to Isaiah 54. They skip over Isaiah 53. They don't include it. So he's asking the rabbi, why are the 52nd and 54th chapters of Isaiah read aloud every year in the synagogue, but the Isaiah 53 is never read? This chapter seems to describe the life, child, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Is this why the chapter skipped over? You guys caught it? You see? So read that post. These are actual letters he wrote to the rabbi. The rabbi tries to respond, and he refutes the rabbi, which is why he became a follower of Jesus, and he now loves and worships the triune God and believes Jesus is God in the flesh. Stephen Schwartz, Steve Schwartz. And these are the actual letters that he wrote to the rabbi, and he's upset. Why did you guys hide this from us? We know why. Because they belong to their father, the devil, unless and, they, unless and until they repent. Now, folks, glory to the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. Part one is done. I hope you're blessed. I hope you're challenged. 
I hope you're strengthened and I hope you're blown away. And I hope you see how easy the true God has made the destruction of these wicked blasphemers and their lies. How easy he has made it. It's so easy even a child can do it. For the glory of the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And why Tobia Singer is a joke. He is pathetic. He is spiritual scum. He's on the level of Ali Dawa, Muhammad Ajab. He's a joke. He's no scholar. I don't know why people are astonished. He's a clown. He is satanic filth, unless and until he repents. That's why he looks so disgusting and demonized and ugly. Because he's demonized. He hates Jesus that much. So we're done with part one. And thank the Lord we had a good crowd. We have up to 290. May the numbers increase for the glory of God. So we get 500, 600, 700 to learn this stuff. Learn this stuff. Absorb this stuff. And present this stuff accurately for the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Brother, any prayer requests before we wrap it up? Oh, man. Just uh, get some kind of sanity. That's all I need right now. All right. Guys, pray for him. Long hours working and studying for the test. Pray he passes with flying colors. Pray for energy. Pray for the blessing on his family. Pray the Lord will bless his daughter with children for the glory of Christ. And so, brother, I'll see you sometime this week. So I'll just let you, I'll put you in the background and we'll wrap it up. All so right. thank you, brother. God bless. God bless. Okay, folks, need your prayers. Lord willing, I got to pack up today and I'm flying out. I need your prayers. I need your continual prayers. Lord willing, pray for traveling mercies. I arrive safely. Pray God will miraculously shield me and protect me and my daughters. Grant us miraculous, divine, supernatural, physical security, safety, protection, and health. Pray the Lord will keep me away from that corrupt, wicked, filthy judge that I never go before her and he removes her from my life. Pray the Lord will bless my time with my daughters to reconnect. And pray for the miracle that I'll be with my daughters every day, not once, every two months, daily with them, raising them in the love of Jesus. Pray for the miracle that God will remove this man from their life, Martin Simon Yako, who is an adulterer, married to an adulteress. Look, I'm not politically correct. She's an adulteress. He's an adulterer. Broken English, broken family, doesn't know the Lord. May God shield my daughters from such an influence. Pray God will bless me to be with them every day, to be a godly influence and shield them from this wicked, evil, adulterous marriage. Pray God will guard my heart so I don't sin against them, that I never shame the Lord, fall into any scandal, but remain pure and holy in love with Jesus. Pray God will give me discipline to stay healthy. And Lord willing, I'll still be doing live streams there in my room when I get there. And pray I return safely. And for the day, I'm with my daughters every day. And guys, pray our numbers increase. Pray my support doesn't decrease. That it stays steady and strong so I can do this work. Even though the Lord doesn't need me, you don't need me. But if the Lord is pleased to use me, I will serve you by the power of the Holy Spirit until the Lord summons me or until the Lord returns. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Father, have mercy. Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy. Christ has died. Christ has been raised physically, bodily, immortally. And Christ will return physically, bodily to the earth. May that be sooner than later to judge the living and dead. May the Son of God purify, wash, cleanse all of us, our loved ones, my daughters, in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Fill my daughters, fill our loved ones, fill us with the Holy Spirit to be in love with Jesus and never betray or deny or blaspheme the name of Jesus. May he save us from Satan and his children and fear of death to love the Lord who has conquered death, conquered the grave, conquered Satan, conquered the world and these blasphemers. May we be more zealous for his honor and not for the praise of men. He is worthy and he is our life. And may he empower us to love him more. We need you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come sooner than later. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Maranatha. Christ is risen, risen indeed. I love you guys for the sake of Jesus. And thank you for praying for me and my daughters and supporting us. May the Lord reward you. Take care.